degrees. Temperature will get up into the mid 50s today here in Pittsburgh. Jay Haynes with the fair catch. Here's Molly McGrath with more on this injury situation. Yeah, Sean, well, Clemson emphasized the importance of running the ball today, and they'll have to do so without two starters on the left side of their offensive line. Left tackle Tristan Lee and left guard Marcus Tate both out with injuries. They did not make the trip. Also for Clemson, their leading tackler Wade Woodas is out for this game with an injury sustained in last week's game. And for Pitt, they have a lot of significant injuries to their offensive line as well. And as a result, their left, their right tackle Jackson Brown will make his first career start today, guys. So with Kate Klubnick at quarterback, Harris Sewell the left guard and the true freshman Elijah Thurman at left tackle. They run left behind that new starting left side and it's Phil Maffa for six yards. Maffa, their leading running back, one of the best in the country. And in the words of Dabo Sweeney, their head coach, their best player. And it's Elijah Thurman, the true freshman, getting the start for Dabo Sweeney, who's down on the field. That's the worst possible news with the injury problems already on the O-line. It's not looked good at all for Clemson. Elijah Thurman, making his first career start. He played most of the game last week. He got rolled up on by Brandon George, the Pittsburgh linebacker while George was making the tackle. Trent Howard has come into the game. Kate Klubnick pulls it down and gets banged out of bounds just short of the first down by about a yard hit by Rasheem Biles. So Howard has come in to play left guard. Harris Sewell has moved over to right guard. Walter Parks has moved out to right tackle. There's an offensive line in flux on third down and one Maffa for the first down. And they were already short at a tackle with Colin Sadler injured, who figured to be in the tackle rotation along the offensive line this year. Yeah, they are very thin along the offensive line, especially a tackle like you referenced, and that will not force Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator, to adjust from his plan. This is a running football team. They're going to feature Maffa. Probably get him 30 touches in the game. And then Klubnik has been a really solid contributor in the run game as well. On first down, the throw out wide to Antonio Williams, their leading receiver, with his 41st catch of the year. This one good for six yards. Tamon Lynham made the play on defense. A transfer from Nebraska played very well last week in their loss to Virginia. These wide receivers are going to have a lot of one on ones on the outside. Pat Narduzzi's defense, they always contribute those safeties down into the interior to stop the run. So these wideouts will have plenty of room outside. You'll see a lot of six man pressures. They crowd the line again, and the throw is dropped by Williams along the far sideline. This is a very aggressive defense that Pat Narduzzi calls. His, off, his defensive coordinator, Randy Bates, they'll bring pressures from everywhere. And on third down in particular, third medium and third long, it can get very exotic. So Cade Klubnick's got to be very smart with how quickly he gets rid of the football and make sure he sees all those guys around in the blue jerseys. Third down and four. Klubnick out of the gun. Over the middle as a wide open receiver. And a first down. Antonio Williams the target again Donovan McMillan playing in his final home game today made the tackle for Pitt and it looks like there's going to be pressure but they end up dropping out which allows the receiver right over the middle and Williams they don't really account for him easy completion for Klubnik and they continue the drive. Quick throw to Bryant Wesco the speedy freshman. And he's inside the 44 yard line. Rasheem Biles there again for the Panthers after a four yard gain. Very clear that a big point of emphasis for Garrett Riley already in this game 
Davo Sweeney's offense. They want to get the ball out of the hands quickly. This is an athletic group. This is a proud group when it comes to sacking the opposing quarterback, hitting the opposing quarterback. So don't take unnecessary risk, especially with a shaky offensive line and some youth up front. Play fake to Moffa. The ball came out of Klubnik's hands for the moment. It is ruled a fumble recovered by Biles. Dabo Sweeney thought Klubnik's arm was going forward and it should be an incomplete pass. It's a fumble recovered by the defense. Postel. But for the moment at least, it is a fumble. Stuart Mullins is the referee leading this crew. And let's see, is the ball out? It is right there as Kate Klubnik's getting ready to pull the hand back. It's number two, Matlack. The transfer from Kansas State coming around the right side and dislodging that football. Just a terrific pass rush as Clemson tried to go with a little play action and there was nothing doing. This pit defense is ferocious up front. That call is going to stand. Clearly, it was a fumble created by Matlack. So here's Pittsburgh on offense at the 46 yard line. Yarnell is first start of the season. Pitched it out wide to Desmond Reed. They're do everything running back in his first year here as a transfer from Western Carolina. He's fifth in the nation in all purpose yardage. I absolutely love watching this young man. He's electric with the football and is terrific as a receiver out of the backfield. Yarnell. Fourth year in the program throws incomplete. Tight coverage by Jaden Lucas. On Kanate Mumfield. Yarnell indicating he thought his receiver was held. Fourth year in the program, redshirted in 2021. Was a backup the last two years and expected to be the starter this year. But they brought Eli Holstein in out of the transfer portal from Alabama. Thurman's going to go to the locker room. Holstein won the job in the preseason. Yarnell told us yesterday he was devastated when he wasn't the starter. His throw is caught by Reed, but nothing there. R.J. Mickens, the veteran, drops it for a loss of two. And great defense after the turnover by the Clemson offense. They'll force a three and out for Pitt. Yeah, just a terrific job by Wes Goodwin's defense, the defensive coordinator, getting off the field in sudden change, not allowing that momentum to swell, and giving it back to their offense. Caleb Junko to punt. Antonio Williams, fair catch. Inside the 10-yard line, 45-yard punt. Clemson will start at the seven when we come back. Their fourth true road game of the season. They're three and zero away from Death Valley. That does not include the neutral site game to start the year in Atlanta against the Georgia Bulldogs. Only 12 teams in the country still undefeated on the road. Nine of them in Power Four conferences. Maffa out near the nine. Raylan Lovelace made the tackle. Maffa started the day just 19 yards away from 1,000 for the season. And that is a major goal. Phil talked to us about the other day. Would be the 18th different player to rush for 1,000 in a year for the Tigers. Klubnik under duress. Throws on the run. Caught out near the 30-yard line. First down catch by T.J. Moore. And that was a great play by Klubnik there. Being able to evade the rush is a very active group, a very athletic group along the front. He's going to have to be terrific today, negotiating in the pocket, keeping his eyes downfield, and getting rid of the ball quickly. Klubnik over the middle, caught again. Antonio Williams thrown down at the 49-yard line, and three flags are thrown. Philip O'Brien Jr., a little too violent on the tackle. And the 23 yard gain will have 15 added to it at the end. Well, I don't know. I mean, I feel like he lifted him up. He was already going backwards, so it might have looked powerful, but it didn't seem like it was egregious. Well, it was. After the play was over, personal foul. 
unnecessary roughness. Defense. Number five. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yeah, I agree with you, right? It, it, he's falling yes. backwards. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah, the, the receiver's still making progress down the field. So O'Brien's <laughs> still trying to tackle him. Right. And he tackled him the best way that he could. I feel like that was just the wrong place at the wrong time, and it resulted in a big penalty against Pat Narduzzi's defense. Well, clearly we're wrong because three officials threw the flag. <laughs> but today's football, Troy Stellato goes out of bounds with another first down, an 11-yard gain. So this remade offensive line giving Klubnik time, and he's taking advantage of it. Six out of seven to start the game for 74 yards. And so far, they've really attacked the kind of the flats, the areas five, six, seven yards downfield near the sideline. That's an area that's been vacated by these corners playing in man coverage on the outside. On the delay, Maffa stopped after a one-yard gain by Jimmy Scott. So already playing without their starting left tackle, Tristan Lee, and right guard, Marcus Tate. They started a new left side for the first play of the game, Elijah Thurman and Sewell. Thurman went out. So Miller moved from right tackle to left. Ken Howard entered the game. Parks moved from right guard to right tackle. Basically four positions changed. Only Linthicum stayed in the same place from where they started the game. Quarterback draw. Klubnik an excellent runner. He lost the football as it was yanked out on the tackle by Brandon George. Recovered by and where are they going to mark the ball? Looks like. They are talking about where to spot it, and they will spot it where the fumble was recovered by Antonio Williams. So Clemson benefits from the fumble, picks up the yardage needed to get the first down. And this is, uh, Kate Klubnik last year, fumbles were a huge problem. He had 10 fumbles last year. He lost five of them. Coming into the day, just two fumbles on the season, lost zero. So far, he's already put the ball in the deck twice now, right there at the end of the run. And Clemson came in having lost five turnovers all season long. Maffa trying to turn the corner and cannot. Pulled down politely by Kyle Lewis at the line of scrimmage. Their terrific linebacker and All-American candidate. Four interceptions, most in the country among linebackers. Kyle Lewis is excellent. I mean, just an electric player. You'll see him all over the field. Tremendous athleticism, great sideline to sideline speed. And he's going to have an interesting matchup today against the tight end, Jake Brinningstool. You can see Lewis, four interceptions on the season. He's terrific in coverage. And in this part of the field in particular, he might have to cover the tight end to man to man who's lined up in the back. Pittsburgh showing pressure. They bring it to the end zone. A beautiful throw. Touchdown, Antonio Williams. Hey, Klubnik, very sharp to start the game. It's a 14-yard touchdown. And this is a great job. You have a guy that's unblocked off the left-hand side. Watch how Kate Klubnik fakes it to Moffa and then drifts away to buy time. He knows the end man on the line of scrimmage. He's responsible for him. That slight drift away bought him a little more time to find Williams in the back of the end zone on a perfect throw. Fortunate to not lose their second fumble. And they capitalize. Antonio Williams, the touchdown catch, his seventh of the year. They went 93 yards in just eight plays. Seven nothing Clemson on the road in Pittsburgh. Today's college football playoff rankings brought to you by Prudential. Oregon will have to pay attention at Wisconsin tonight. Of course, the big game tonight on ABC at 7:30 is Georgia hosting Tennessee. Yeah, massive game. Georgia playoff game for them, must win. And I'm telling you, I think BYU is going to have their hands full tonight against Kansas. Robert Gunn's kickoff is a touchback. Here's Matt Barry. Sean McDonough, Greg McElroy, happy to talk to you. AT&T countdown of the CFB National Championship update. First starting with Texas at Arkansas. Easy money, Quinn Ewers, Matthew Golden. Touchdown Longhorns, 7-0. Let's check in on Colorado. Win out, they play for a Big 12 championship. Perhaps a college football playoff berth. Shador Sanders to Will Shepard, 7-3 Colorado. All right, Matt, thank you. Here at 7-0 Clemson. 
after their longest drive of the year in terms of yards, 93. Poppy Williams, the catch from Nate Yarnell, and 24 yards on first down for Pittsburgh. They like to play at a quick tempo, and Yarnell gets them up to the line. And that was a nice throw, too, and a good call by Cade Bell. Moving the pocket, giving his quarterback a nice, easy completion for a big play. Gavin Bartholomew, the tight end, the motion man. Desmond Reed turns the corner. Desmond Reed down the sideline. And down inside the 10. The dynamic Reed. And just a great job. Watch number nine on the left-hand side. Mumfield come in, clean up that safety, and Reed is off to the races, runs around the corner, and he's got one man to beat. Terrific job sealing it by Mumfield and forcing Jaden Lucas, number 10, to try to make the tackle. He can't, and Reed's out the gate. 43 yards, first and goal, Panthers from the eight. Yarnell. And it's incomplete. Diving attempt by Bartholomew. One of the concerns the coaches have about Yarnell, one of the reasons he did not win the job against Eli Holstein in the preseason, sometimes he tries to do too much. They thought when he was competing for the job over the summer, that was the case. And you could see there he was very careful not to force it into traffic in the end zone. Yeah, knows they absolutely cannot lose the turnover battle today, but I'd like to see him run it down here. It's tossed out to Daniel Carter, the sixth year senior, playing in his final home game. Barrett Carter made the tackle at the four, a gain of four. You don't see many sixth year seniors, all of them in one program. Pat Narduzzi, very proud of the fact that. They have a great culture here. Their players come to Pittsburgh and they stay like Yarnell. Fourth year in the program has never been the starter. And yet he has stayed a lot of times guys just jump in the portal. Timeout Clemson Yarnell told us yesterday. I came to Pittsburgh to play for Pat Narduzzi and I love being a part of the great culture we have here. It's important for me to stay with my teammates. Yeah, I think that's really a great indicator of program health and stability knowing that you have so many veteran guys 19 guys that were celebrated the day on senior day and, and several guys I mean how often do you see a guy get named the starter in the spring beat out in fall camp and yet stay on the roster to be a great teammate just speaks to what they've built here under Pat Narduzzi and it's a lot to be proud of that's Kate Bell the offensive coordinator in the middle of the picture in his first year here came from Western Carolina where he was the offense coordinator for his dad the former professional quarterback Irwin Bell he's done a nice job here he said I tried to bring an NFL style of offense but that can execute at a high tempo yeah it's a really fun offense to watch and might have two downs to get it here depending on how much they gain here on third and four here's the fake to Carter bodies get tangled up and there is a flag Kenny Johnson went down in the end zone. Pass interference will be the call against Avion Terrell. Pass interference. Defense. Number 20. By rule, the ball replaces the two yard line with an automatic first down. And Terrell is a tough matchup right here. One on one, you see the left hand grabbing the jersey. The progressive pylon cam shows you exactly what the call was is Johnson trying to work away Terrell has to grab him or else it's a touchdown so a good penalty nonetheless. First and goal from the two Pitt trying to answer the Clemson touchdown. Carter remains the running back. And he's in for a touchdown. And how about number two just draws the penalty a moment ago. Watch Kenny Johnson. He's going to actually get out in front and lead block. Not often you see a wide receiver leading the running back into the end zone, but he does runs right behind the big 200 pound wide out and muscles his way across the goal line. Terrific response from Pitt's offense. 75 yards in five plays under two minutes to do it. Ben Sauls ties the game. 
Daniel Carter's fourth rushing touchdown of the season, fifth overall. It is last home game at Ackershire Stadium. The SEC on ABC schedule for the rest of today. Texas and Arkansas going on right now, then LSU and Florida. And tonight, the big one, number seven, Tennessee, number 12, Georgia. We mentioned it briefly. Many were surprised Georgia was number 12, given the tough schedule they played, but with two losses, their CFP invitation perhaps <laughs> hanging by a thread tonight. That's a very good Tennessee team that goes there 8 1 with a leading rusher in the SEC and Dylan Sampson. It's going to be an incredible game tonight. And I'll, I'll be curious. I mean, we saw Georgia last week up close and personal, and their offensive line really struggled against that Ole Miss defensive front. Well, Tennessee, they're, they're a lot like Ole Miss on the front defensively, so we'll see if they can block them for Carson Beck. Pitt scores just the second touchdown allowed in the first quarter all year by Clemson. The other was by Wake Forest. And Ben Sauls a very strong leg will kick off. Over the head of Jay Haynes. Well you're very familiar with the quarterbacks from which these two uh, their high schools they hail from Cade Klubnik out of Westlake in Austin Texas and Yarnell from Lake Travis in Austin. <laughs> of course and. Cade, coached by the outstanding head coach, Hall of Famer Todd Dodge, and Yarnell taking over for an injured Garrett Gilbert, or not Garrett Gilbert, excuse me, an injured Hudson Card. So uh, didn't play as much at Lake Travis as Klubnik did, but two guys that went to rival high schools. I had to jab them though and say, not quite as good as South Lake Carroll, but still Your excellent. alma mater. <laughs> Klubnik throws, drops by T.J. Moore. Well, Klubnik out of Westlake. Help me, Drew Brees, Nick Foles, Sam Ellinger, Sam Ellinger, yeah, mm -hmm. bunch of good ones. Bunch and of good ones. Lake Travis, Garrett Gilbert, Baker Mayfield, among others. Uh, schools about 13 miles apart. They didn't play against each other in high school, right? But they knew each other. Seven on seven. It's a small world that Texas high school quarterback fraternity, man. It's a fun one, and you always have to jab each other. That never ends. Klubnik's now seven out of nine. Both incompletions have been dropped balls. Phil Maffa dropped for a loss. Sean Fitzsimmons led the way for that pit defensive front. Defensive coordinator Randy Bates said, we will do whatever it takes to stop the run. Completely sell out against the run that they have so far. And third and long, this is where you see a ton of pressure. Randy Bates will bring the heat when you're in third and long. So the whole idea is to hit the quarterback as often as they can. They rushed only four, and it's a diving catch made by Cole Turner, and they give him a nice spot, it appears, for a first down. The nose of the football right on the 35. Yeah, the progressive pylon now, cam. The ball's inside, clearly inside the line. Really? Clemson snaps it. There is no stoppage, and Maffa's dropped for a loss. Rasheem Biles, Kyle Lewis made the stop. It's a loss of three on the play officially. So far, it's looking like with the commitment that Pitt is making to slowing down Phil Maffa, the quick passing attack from Clemson is going to be the path of least resistance. Some quick throws to the outside, find a couple one-on-ones, and when you get a good look, take a shot downfield to soften up the secondary. 101 yards passing. Here in the opening quarter for Klubnik. Given plenty of time, throws deep for Brenning Stoll, and the tight end cannot hang on. With very tight coverage from Javon McIntyre, one of the Pittsburgh safeties. Thought for a second there, Brenning Stoll is going to be able to reel it in, but just out of the grasp. It was really well covered. It's a well placed ball, and another third and long where they didn't bring pressure last time. This time, let's see if they do. They blitz on more than 55% of the snaps on third and 11 plus. They rushed only four on the last third down. Looking like they're going to bring six as they so often do. They do. Klubnik cannot get away. 
got across the line of scrimmage, but then taken down by Rasheem Biles, and Clemson will punt. That's just a great job by Pitt's defense. Really helpful as a defense coordinator to know that hey, you can call pressure, and yet your guys will be disciplined enough to not over pursue the quarterback. So as soon as Klubnik took off, Biles was there to drop him for a short game. Aiden Swanson, the 24 year old punter in his sixth year at Clemson, his 45th career game. Desmond Reed, dangerous punt returner, brought one back for a touchdown this year, plays it on a bounce. And gets taken down immediately, but a good decision by Reed to play it because it would have bounced down toward the goal line. Well, Sean Dabo Sweeney just gave an impassioned speech to his defense on the sideline. He said, we've got to earn the right to rush the passer by stopping the run. He pointed to Desmond Reed's explosive run on that touchdown drive, said, he's just one guy. He's running all over you. Stop him and fix it. So Sweeney really frustrated with Reed's production early. Easier said than done. <laughs> he is something special, man. Undersized, but my goodness, he's one pound for pound, one of the best players in the country. They list him at 5'8, he's probably 5'6. Yarnell got hit as he dumped it off to Jake Overman, the tight end. Good for 11 yards and a first down, his 13th catch of the year. Great job by Yarnell, too. Watch him adjust his arm angle right there, a little sidearm. Throws it a little bit behind him, but Overman's able to reel it in for a nice completion. Great adjustment on the arm angle there from Yarnell. As he got hit by T.J. Parker. Yarnell in the flat. Reed with fellow number zero. And Barrett Carter took him to the grass. After a loss of six, big play by Carter. Well, that makes it simple. And when you're a man coverage, hey, I'll, I'll take zero. You take zero. We'll just figure it out, <laughs> is Wes Goodwin. A lot of man coverage called and a very aggressive group in his own right. He'll ramp up the pressure, too, against a relatively inexperienced quarterback as far as starts made is concerned. Second and 16, fake to Reed. Now they check it down to Reed with some running room. Taken out of bounds by Avion Terrell. Reed started the last two years at Western Carolina. Cade Bell was the offensive coordinator there. We talked to Cade Bell yesterday. He said, did Reed come along with you? He said, no, he was actually in the transfer portal for a couple of weeks before I got hired here at Pitt. Matter of fact, Reed was on a visit to Coastal Carolina when he got a call from Cade Bell, he told him, hey, I'm going to Pitt, so don't make any commitments anywhere else. He stays in the block, and the pass is off the hands of Mumfield. Just and a Pitt will punt on fourth down and seven. And just a little off the mark there. And Kate Bell does a good job going over and talking to his quarterback, Nate Yarnell. He had a guy open. Mumfield was there on the shallow cross, and he's just a little bit too far out in front for the quarterback. Caleb Junko will punt again. Antonio Williams fair catch 26 yard line 43 yard punt no return there's Ackershire Stadium off campus but still good turnout in the pit Taco Bell live my student section all season long student sections across the country competing to be the Taco Bell live my student section of the year download the Taco Bell app to learn more Last home game for Pitt. They got off to a great 7-0 start, their best since 1982, which was Dan Marino's final year as the quarterback of the Panthers. But injuries on their offensive line, a one-sided loss at SMU, then a surprising loss here last week to UVA, and they come in at 7-2, as does Clemson on target. Klubnik to Wesco for a gain of 12 and another Tigers first down. It is a really good hit football team. I mean, I know that the last two weeks, last week in particular, not emblematic of how their season's gone. They are excellent on defense, and the offense under Cade Bell has really taken off and found some rhythm at times. Williams in trouble and dropped for a loss. Burning Stool was out there trying to block for him, but could not. And a nice play by 
Braylon Lovelace for a three yard loss for Clemson. Dabo Sweeney's offense at some point they're playing a lot of sideline to sideline which is fine but against Pitt they're going to just dare you to try them downfield. They're going to be in situations where their corners are in one on ones with wide receivers and you got to throw it over their head and be aggressive. We mentioned the blitz numbers Pitt blitzes 44 percent of the time on all downs that's most in power Four conference football. Klubnik's been very good against the blitz this year. Ten That's touchdown complete. passes, no interceptions coming in. T.J. Moore, the catch for a first down. 7-7, seven, seven, Clemson on the move. As they snap it for the first play of the second quarter. Klubnik takes off running. Trying to stiff arm the would-be tackler, and he could not get away from Kyle Lewis. And... Klubnik surrounded on the pit sideline by a lot of people over there woofing at him as he got taken out of bounds for a three yard loss and it'll bring on a punt. Man this pit defense is so athletic Lewis right there I and mean, Klubnik can run but the way he was able to chase him down and close that space immediately to force the punt was very impressive. Aiden Swanson to punt again. Desmond Reed back deep. Reed brought one back 78 yards for a touchdown in the opener against Kent State. He makes a fair catch of a 40 yard punt. Well, Klubnik tried to get rid of Lewis and then uh, he got surrounded over there. <laughs> it's, not, it's not fun going to the opposite sideline as a quarterback. I mean, it's just so unfriendly. Where's my offensive line? I just need to stand behind those guys. The club Nick's off to a nice start with the underneath stuff, but at some point they got to open things up downfield. So much improved over a year ago. It's second season as the Clemson starter. Nate Yarnell in his first start of the season handed it off. Daniel Carter rumbles for a first down. Out to the 31 yard line gain of 12 Sammy Brown made the tackle Carter comes off with his left arm dangling. Hopefully Carter will be OK. I mean Reed is their bell cow for sure but Carter big and physical at 220 pounds and against a big physical defense he might be the back to get a little more work. And Clemson playing without its leading tackler, the linebacker Wade Woodaz. Quick throw and a catch by Raphael Williams Jr., better known as Poppy. A three yard gain. Woodaz injured his leg, a serious contusion. His leg was black and blue all week. He didn't practice here, but not dressed. So Sammy Brown will see even more snaps. He played a lot of the game last week and was terrific. The freshman Brown wears 47. Yarnell taken down by four Tigers. The times like that, you wish you were still the backup quarterback. Here's Molly. Well, Sean, they were hopeful that Wade Woodaz could play, but Dabo told me before the game the cold factored into their decision. He just felt too sore and in pain, and Sweeney said his job today is to help freshman linebacker Sammy Brown. So they're expecting Woodaz to continue to lead from the sideline. He's been in Brown's ear, watching the iPad with him, giving corrections and encouragement, and continuing to be a leader. On third down and eight, Yarnell sidestepped the rush. Still trying to find somebody open, had to get rid of it, and uh, threw it away. It was a diving attempt at an interception along the far sideline. By Ronan Hannafin, it was Sammy Brown who forced the throw. And that's a pretty good guy to have step in. Sammy Brown, <laughs> the high school Butkus Award winner, is the best high school linebacker in the country. Last year at Jefferson High School, Commerce, Georgia, near Athens. A guy that's only played 170 some odd snaps this year and yet leads the team in tackles for loss with nearly 10. Caleb Junko again. Antonio Williams, another fair catch at the 25 yard line, 42 yard boot. Still tied at seven. We're early in the second like quarter this. here in Pittsburgh. The 12 team college football playoff begins with the first round December 20th and 21st. That's how I get by.
Pittsburgh. Here's today's player spotlight brought to you by Old Spice. We talked about the improvement over last season to this season for Cade Klubnik, and the numbers demonstrate that. Already six more passing touchdowns than he had in 13 games last year. This is game 10 this year. His touchdown pass today is 25th of the year, and that is third in the country. Cameron Ward of Miami 32, Chandler Morris of North Texas threw his 27th last night. Two yard gain for Phil Maffa. They know Pittsburgh sells out to stop the run, so they <laughs> said, okay, we're going to throw the ball a lot. With Garrett Riley calling the plays. So far, they've been really good on some of the intermediate throws inside of 10 yards or so, but at some point against press coverage, you got to try some things downfield. And he's running out of time hit as he throws he throws it down the field and Wesco makes the catch. Donovan McMillan made the tackle right on Greg McElroy's cue. They throw it deep for a 45 yard gain. And this is a route that has been run against Pat Narduzzi forever and ever and ever. I threw a touchdown on two. It's a little grab by the inside receiver with a post over the top. Perfect throw and execution. Lovely got hit as he throws. He throws deep again for a touchdown. Antonio Williams. He was wide open for a 28-yard score. His second touchdown of the game. And just a great job. You'll see the route. And watch how he just climbs right on the safety's toes. There's no collision, so he's full speed. Sets him up to the outside, swims right inside. And there's nothing between him and the end zone. Just an excellent route against the safety. Nolan Hooser adds the extra point. Just three plays to go 75 yards. Following the advice of the national championship winning quarterback, Mr. McElroy. Deep balls down the middle. And a second touchdown completion, Klubnik to Williams. And just a thing of beauty. And then that play against Pat Narduzzi, they are so consumed by trying to stop the run. Those safeties get so involved in looking in the backfield. Play action with posts over the top is a route that you can hit over and over and over again. Now, you got to get a good release. you got to be able to get over the top with a great receiver because the corners are excellent. But when you do, they are there. So that's a play that I would imagine Cade Klubnik and Garrett Riley will absolutely get back to because they must like the matchup they have with Williams. So Robert Gunn will kick off. Kenny Johnson and Derek Davis back deep for Pitt. Gunn usually a touchback kicker. This is a line drive kick that goes out of bounds. We kick out of bounds. Kicking tee. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35-yard line. First down. There's someone who never hits one out of bounds, Matt Barry. That's right, McDonough, fairways and greens. And here, Fairfield by Marriott Studio update. Developing situation at Wrigley Field between Ohio State and Northwestern. Jack Lausch puts Northwestern on top early 7-0. Ohio State comes back with Quinshawn Judkins one-yard run. We are tied at seven apiece. All right, Matt, thank you. Desmond Reed taken down by Khalil Barnes, the safety for a loss of four. We talked about the issues on the offensive line for Clemson and Pittsburgh's had them as well. It's really a big reason why they've struggled on offense the last couple of weeks. They lost Branson Taylor in the sixth game of the year against Cal. Their outstanding left tackle and their line has been in flux ever since. They've moved the right tackle Ryan Baird number 70 to left tackle today. Jackson Brown number 77 making his first career start as a Panther. There's a wide open Mumfield. Kanate Mumfield. A 31 yard gain and a strike thrown by Nate Yarnell. That was a nice throw there by Yarnell. He's in a nice rhythm right now. Out wide and nowhere to go for Day Day Reynolds. 
They weren't sure if he was going to play today. He dislocated his shoulder last week. Pat Narduzzi said Reynolds told him, I am playing in this game. This, of course, Clemson being kind of the alpha dog program in the ACC for the better part of the last decade. This is one that everybody has circled in the ACC. So Pat Narduzzi and his players understanding the opportunity at hand. Now they haven't played a lot, but they've had some memorable games. It's the sixth meeting all time. The fifth since they've been fellow members of the ACC are now taken down from behind. Kay Denhoff with his first sack of the season for West Goodwin. That was a big sack, too, because with the strong leg of Ben Sauls, they were inside a field goal range. Now they might not be. So Kate Bell probably thinking at this point, how do I make this field goal more manageable? You can hand it off. You absolutely cannot take a sack. These have been the two biggest sack teams in the country since 2019. Pitt with more than any other program in that time, and Clemson number two nationally. Yarnell's pass batted down. He had an open receiver cutting across the middle, but Barrett Carter knocked it out of the air. They're trying to get it to C.J. Lee. And a good job by Barrett Carter. They're just going to drop out underneath it. They know that they're only going to rush three, so Carter's eyes are on Yarnell the whole way. He falls right out underneath it, puts the right hand up, gets the tip, and forces the punt. Evan Sweeney said many times Barrett Carter one of the very best players he's coached at Clemson and they've had a lot of great ones. Junko. And out of bounds. They're going to spot it at the 12 yard line. 32 yard punt. 14 7 Clemson playing at Pittsburgh today. Presented by Tyson Brand is brought to you by Royal Caribbean. Come see and McDonald's. An emotional day, senior day. Look, well, Brandon George wasn't that emotional. He's playing in his 62nd game at Pitt. And during the weekend, he's asked about it. He said, Is it senior day already? <laughs> and he said to him, It's just another game. He said, We have two more to go win after this one. Well, they've stopped the run, Pittsburgh. Clemson just 15 yards rushing, but 207 total yards and a seven point lead as they go on offense again. Jake Brinningstool across the 16, Molly. Well, Sean, after Clemson's explosive pass plays last drive, Pitt's D line coaches locked in on affecting quarterback Cade Klubnick, saying, Keep resetting the line of scrimmage. We're right there to getting to the quarterback. We just need to keep hitting him, even if it's just an arm or a hand. Make contact with the quarterback. So they're not changing their approach. Their message is still stop the run, hit the quarterback. And that message is never going to change. As long as Pat Narduzzi's the coach, they go deep again. Williams was breaking free, and the ball was just a bit too long for him. Just barely missed there by Kate Klubnick. Got to it a little bit late. And it's a big third down here for Pitt. You flip the field, you're able to kick it down. Hope your defense can make a play and get off and get you the ball back around midfield. So big play here for Pitt's defense. Let's see if they bring pressure. I think they're going to play coverage here and just kind of read Kate Klubnick's eyes. Clemson three out of five on third down, converted on their first three. They do play coverage, and the pass is too high over the head of Adam Randall. With Rashad Battle in coverage. Well, Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator, has been here now for seven years with Pat Narduzzi. He said yesterday, Greg, if you're not hitting the quarterback, you're wasting your time bringing all these pressures. And they really haven't even made that much contact with Clubman. No, they haven't. And they had a really nice rush early that forced the sack fumble. But other than that, they really haven't gotten home. So they're going to probably have to ramp things up by bringing those linebackers. Because right now, the pass rush just isn't winning against an offensive line that's been kind of remade with a couple injuries. This offensive line in flux done a very nice job for Clemson. Aiden Swanson, the putter, high and short, and Reed catches it on a bounce. 
Made a fair catch signal, played it on a hop. And the officials conferring. And now there is a flag on the field. He definitely waved and then took off with after it. After the play was over, delay of game. Receiving team, number zero, running after giving a fair catch signal. Five yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, timeout. Midway through the second quarter, this ACC game, Clemson leading Pitt 14 to 7. State will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Three extra points so far today. Two for Clemson, one for Pittsburgh. Pit ball from zone 39, the Panthers. With 124 yards of offense with Nate Yarnell is about to get hit from behind. He gets sacked for the second time. Jaheim Lawson there. He's been an emerging threat in recent weeks. And just right around the edge, Ryan Bear is such a tough responsibility coming over from the right side, now playing the left tackle spot because of all the challenges they've had there. And Lawson goes right around him with a ton of speed and makes the play. There are the numbers we referenced earlier. These are the top two sack teams in all college football over the last five years. Yarnell, quick throw, low throw, but caught in front of the Clemson sideline. Anate Mumfield lost his helmet, so he'll come off after a six yard gain. Another third down and long, third and eight for the Panthers. And so far, that pass rush starting to heat up just a little bit. So Cade Bell is going to have to get the ball out of his quarterback's hands quickly. They had some success earlier in the game moving the pocket, rolling Yarnell out to the right-hand side. On the left hash, you can do that, but here with the condensed formation, I wouldn't anticipate it. 0 for 4 on third down, the Panthers. Their offense has struggled in recent weeks. Back-to-back -back losses. Yarnell throws, caught. First down, 41-yard line. Day-Day Reynolds, the catch with... Maybe on Terrell in coverage, 17 yard gain, and then Pat Narduzzi out to try to give him a pat on the back for the catch. And a really well thrown ball as well. Just a back shoulder is allowed to hold Reynolds up, and he separates at the very end to make that play. Terrific conversion and throw. Yarnell, 10 out of 15 for 91 yards. Breaking free, Carter, Daniel Carter, a tough run. Inside the 30. Ronan Hannafin made the tackle. And there's an injured Pitt Panther on the play. And it's Carter grabbing at his leg. Earlier he went off with his arm dangling. We've talked about the Offensive lines in flux on both sides. There's Jackson Brown, the sophomore from Danville, California, making his first career start. He played in only two games this year for Pitt. Emotional day for him. He is the son of Tony Brown, who was a terrific offensive lineman here in the early and mid 80s on some outstanding Pitt teams. And Jackson lost his dad in 2010 to cancer at the age of 45 when he was just six years old. But his dad has always been his inspiration. Tony Brown was a very well-liked man. Molly sent us a great article that was written back in 2010 when he passed away. The family moved to Scottsdale, and among his many friends, Tony Brown's friends, Charles Barkley, who I corresponded with last night, said his dad was just a great guy and a great friend. So a really special day for Jackson today, who actually started at Cal, started his career at Cal because he wanted to stay close to home didn't play much there and transferred back to his dad's school Molly. Yes yeah, Sean Jackson honors his father Tony by wearing his number 77 and grew up watching old tapes of his dad's games and said every snap of football I'm playing for him he is always thinking of his father and this is very special making his first career start for his father's alma mater. 
so emotional day. His dad, that you know, he played. His dad's line coach was the legendary Joe Moore, for whom the Joe Moore Award is named. Obviously, is the best offensive line group in the country. And you think they had guys like Jimbo Covert, Bill Fralick, and Mark May back in those days? But the Tony Brown played briefly in professional football. He signed his letter of intent to Jackson 40 years to the day after his dad did. Of course, it was to go play at Cal. That's what we're talking about with the great offensive line and some great players here. But they need this young man. You know, we were joking yesterday. They had to go to Jackson Brown because they were running on empty. Mm, so good. I knew, tackle. I knew that was going to make the show. I knew that was going to make the show. It's just such good material. Uh, but I, I thought it was funny until Scott Johnson, our director, <laughs> thought the same thing at the same time that I realized it really must have been a layup. That you look at you look at the offensive line, they've definitely struggled, and it's and it's been a challenge. It's Daniel Carter now, the cart coming out, and they've now put what appears to be something on his right leg. Yeah, so boot. just hate to see that in yeah. a young man that his last home game, six years. He said the same thing. You know, he hasn't played a lot. You know, he's been a backup player. He's been a special teams guy. Uh, bear in mind, he's the personal protector on their punt team when they go to punt. So he's been here uh, for six years in South Florida. And uh, what a tough way to have your last home game unfold. Yeah, it's such a fun game. You see all the teammates go out and congratulate him. And give the thumbs up to the crowd. But man, just so, so disappointing. Any player, any one that goes down in your final home game is just so, so disappointing. So hopefully that young man will make a speedy recovery and get back to full strength at some point very soon. And as we've seen, he's an important player. Actually carried the ball more than Desmond Reed so far. Classy Clemson sideline wishing him the best, including a fist bump from Cade Clubman. And the student section down there applauding for Carter. So they're on the move. Clock running now under six minutes to go in the half. 14 to 7. Clemson. Fifth play of the drive for Pitt. Desmond Reed back at running back into the bag of tricks. Kenny Johnson, one of their fastest players, yanked down on a nice tackle by Khalil Barnes, holding that to a two-yard gain. Good discipline there by Barnes. Try to go with an end around. It's a very aggressive Clemson defense that has a ton of athleticism. So sometimes you can take advantage against them with misdirection, but that time nothing doing as Barnes sniffs it out. Here's a Clemson blitz. Yarnell had to pull it back down. Throws. There's a flag down. He threw it right into the hands of Sammy Brown, who couldn't hold on. They had Yarnell around the ankles. He still managed to get it off, but the freshman Brown couldn't hang on to what would have been an interception. Holding. Offense. Number 77. Ten-yard penalty. Second down. Jackson Brown on the right side working against the pass rush upfield. Looks like Hoffler who beats him around and then as he's trying to curve inside, looks like he gets a handed full of jersey and Brown nearly had the interception with plenty of space out in front had he secured it. Quick screen. Desmond Reed slipped on the catch. Got a one-yard gain. They are in field goal range. And a big play call here on third down. And 17 for Cade Bell. Just 31 years old. Yarnell's been sacked three times, too, so needs to get the ball out. Because you take a sack here, you run the risk of being out of field goal range. Debo Sweeney wants to know why his knee was down, why they had stopped it. I'm not sure they're going to move the ball very far. And the ball, the knee down back at the 41. It's been determined that the runner's knee was down. It's about the 41-yard line. Third down. And so 
good catch by the replay booth. Quick replay process too. I like that as yeah, well. They may. It was pretty clear on the replay. Right. But now it's fringe field goal range for Sauls. He has made a 58 yarder. And that's about what this would be. His 58 yarder earlier this year tied Alex Kessman's school record. And earlier they dropped back the pass and Barrett Carter tipped it. This time let's see if Wes Goodwin decides to bring pressure. See if they can't knock them out of field goal range with the sack. But it looks like pressure was called. Now they'll check to it because of the formation the Panthers were in. Three receivers to Yarnell's right. Reed's in the flat. Yarnell throws and is broken up. Off the hands of Kenny Johnson, but he couldn't hang on in traffic. Good throw by Yarnell. There were two Pittsburgh receivers very close together. And that was a great throw by Yarnell. It's going to be a bang bang play. You know you're going to get hit hard, and Johnson just drops it. It would have been a tough catch. Knows he's going to get hit, but drops really hurt this team last week, and there, the drop leads to the field goal. And they've had more drops and more offensive penalties in the previous two games than any team in the country. Here's Ben Sauls, He's made one from 57 and 58 this year. This is 59 to break his own school record. Long enough, but no good. Wide to the right. He hit this ball so hard. Good snap, good hold, but just you can see the end over end nature, not perfectly as it drifts just ever so slightly to the right. Dabo looks on, pushing it that way as well. I don't know if his hands quite move the ball, but. How about yesterday we talked to Pat Narduzzi about seniors, any stories that make you particularly emotional on senior day? And the first guy he mentioned was Ben Sauls, the kicker. So when he got here he was a scholarship kicker out of high school in Ohio. But uh, he struggled and they had a walk on Sam Scarton who won the job. Down goes Klubnik back at the 31 yard line. Sincere Edwards made the sack for Pittsburgh and just a great rush along the right hand side as Walker Parks he had to slide out from right guard to right tackle so playing out of position. Gives up the rush to Edwards around the edge, and the freshman drops Klubnik to get him behind the sticks. Pitt Panthers with their first sack of the day. The 31st of the year. They came in fifth in the nation in sacks this year. Ole Miss, Boise State, South Carolina, North Carolina. Loss of nine, three and a half to go in the half. Klubnik sets up a screen to Josh Sapp, a backup tight end. And he got dropped at the 30 by Braylon Lovelace. Loss of two more, they're in reverse. Third and super long here. This is where you would think for most defenses, they're gonna play coverage. Probably some drop eight with only three rushers, but not with Randy Bates and Pat Narduzzi. They are not afraid and down in distances like this to heat up Kate Klumnik. So expect a quick pass here, maybe a tunnel screen or something like that. Flag down, there was movement along the line of scrimmage. It's intercepted and dropped into the hands of Donovan McMillan, and it came out as he hit the ground. There was movement at the line of scrimmage. Offside. Defense, number 49. Five yard penalty, repeat third down. Good use of the snap count there by Kate Klubnik to make this third down just the tiniest bit more manageable. So far, the go-to guy in the game today has been Antonio Williams, number zero. Let's see if they look his direction. And uh, Pittsburgh's offside again. Free play again for Klubnik on the run. And incomplete intended for Wesco with some very handsy coverage. Ryland Gandy had the coverage. Looked like Key Thompson was offside. Defense, number 38. Five yard penalty. Replay third down. Well, they've been killing themselves with penalties in recent weeks, most of them on the offense. 
That's back to back penalties against the defense and very careless. Just can't do it. I mean, now, I mean, third and 11, your percentages are significantly higher than third and 21 of converting. So I would anticipate pressure here from Randy Bates, which means if I'm Clemson, I'm thinking some type of max protect, or I'm looking in this direction. Number zero, he's your go to guy, Williams. They're offside again and unabated to the quarterback, so they blow it dead. The pit sideline is gesturing that this time they were drawn off. Offside. The officials do not agree. Defense number two unabated to the quarterback. Five yard penalty. Still third down. Well, it was third and 21. Three straight penalties for being offside. And now it's third and six. And you see Kate Klubnik clap. That's the snap count that they're using. But the center, Ryan Linthicum, he has the freedom to hold it just ever so slightly if he wants to. And if he feels like that defense is on their toes, he can hang on to it. That's now three in a row in which they've caught Pittsburgh in the neutral zone. Surely they won't jump again, right? Surely you can't be serious. Don't call me Shirley. Here comes pressure and Klubnik's pass incomplete. He had to throw it quickly. Randy Bates had his goal met by his defenders. They did get a hit on Klubnik. What an interesting sequence there of four plays. Three offsides and then an errant throw by Klubnik. Really one of the first misses of the day. You thought had that throw been a little bit better, you might have had a chance to hit Wesco on the move, but the low throw and the incompletion leads to the, leads to the punt. Fourth punt for Aiden Swanson. And Pitt will get the ball back with three timeouts and the two minute stoppage. Desmond Reed back again. Makes the fair catch at the nine with Ronan Hannafin right in his face. 45 yard punt. Look at today's weekend lineup brought to you by Wendy's Saucy Nugs. SMU undefeated in conference play. They'll be hosting Boston College at 3.30 right here on ESPN. And uh, Grace and James will get the start at quarterback. Bill O'Brien made a change, and then Thomas Castellano said, see you later. I'm out of here. Yeah, it's wild uh, where we're at in college football. But Grace and James, Bill O'Brien, I trust him when it comes to evaluating quarterbacks for sure. On the delay, Desmond Reed. Reed, the Tackled by Peter Woods, who's returned this week. He did not play last week at Virginia Tech. They played very well without him against the Hokies. Gave up just one touchdown on defense at Virginia Tech. That didn't come until the final two minutes of the game. The other touchdown for the Hokies was on a blocked field goal return. Hailed Virginia Tech to 40 yards rushing. They were averaging more than 200 per game. Two minute timeout, a seven point lead for Clemson. The Tigers' final road game, conference game of the season. Mexico halftime report. Good game early on between Texas. They're razor sharp against Arkansas. Plus, the Buckeyes, a little bit of a cat fight on the road. And a wake up call for Colorado. Everyone loves a 10 a.m. kick. Dan Mullen, Joey Galloway, join me coming up at the half. All right, Matt, thank you. Pit on offense. Nate Yarnell on target. Kanate Mumfield across the 27 yard line. They'll mark it at the 28. And Pitt goes quickly after a 16 yard gain. They have all three timeouts. Desmond Reed stopped just behind the line of scrimmage. He had the one long run. Other than that, neither team has done much on the ground today. Yarnell hit immediately and sacked. Officially four sacks. Peter Woods leading the way on that one, and now it's Clemson using a timeout. And just right here, so difficult on the left guard and the center as big old Peter Woods at 315 pounds goes inside and just smashes the center, number 56, Lyndon Cooper. And there's nothing that you can do about a man moving that fast when you're 315 pounds. And you can see the difference in the pit offensive line. 
since Branson Taylor went out. A terrific left tackle. They think he'll be an NFL player. He's out of eligibility here. Ryan Jacoby, the left guard, has been battling an ankle injury down the stretch here. He didn't play at all last week. They brought him back this week. But there's no doubt that the big reason why, Greg, they score only 25 points, and a lot of that was a garbage time in the loss at SMU, scored only 19 last week against UVA, is the downgrade along the offensive line. Yeah, it's been a significant problem. And with a, a group along the defensive line like Clemson has, there's just not that much you can do. They can beat you on the inside and on the outside. Now Pitt's trying to find answers. I mean, they're moving guys in and out of the lineup. They're moving right tackle to left starting a new right tackle so they're trying everything but it's a tough tough task to block these Clemson Tigers and so far they've had some struggles five carries 43 for Desmond Reed but he had 43 on one carry the other four have gone for a total of zero Yarnell Mumfield dropped the ball flags down behind the play I think they roughed the passer another drop by an ordinarily very good Pitt receiver. They've had more drops the last two weeks than they had in the first seven games combined. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. With targeting. Whoa. Defense. Number 47. 15 yard penalty. First down. Ruling of targeting is under further review. And it's going to be a huge review because Brown seeing more action with the injury to Woodaz. And the clear targeting there and Brown starts on the outside and slides back inside with the move up front and he just leads with the crowd of the helmet. I mean that is targeting textbook targeting crowd of the helmet defenseless player forcible contact you name it that checks the box so Brown has played his last snap of the day and that's a massive loss with Wade Wood as like you said being out. Well, you seem convinced. Let's bring in our rules expert, Matt Austin. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, Sean, I think Greg nailed it. He does. He lowers his head. He attacks with force and nails him right in the chest with the crowd of the helmet. So this should be a pretty easy call for the replay booth. Against Sammy Brown. Came in with nine tackles for a loss this season, despite the fact that he hasn't played many snaps. That number led all freshmen in the country. Very highly recruited player, number 13 overall in any position. Ruling of targeting is confirmed. Mm -hmm. Number 47 is disqualified. Now where do they go? No Wade Woodass and now no Sammy Brown. So athletic, Sammy Brown ran a 10.7. Hundred meters in high school. D. Creighton comes in. A Freshman from Alpharetta, Georgia, wearing number 22. He's had eight tackles all season long. So Creighton in now, and that's significant. Hasn't had a ton of playing time this year, especially in meaningful minutes. But Kobe McLeod hurt earlier in the year. Wood has out. That's linebacker group got very thin very quickly. And the penalty brings the ball to the 36. Still all three timeouts for Pitt. 120 in the half. Catch made by Poppy Williams. He got eight. Yarnell gets them up to the line quickly. 13 out of 19 now for 111. They bring a blitz and he throws before Poppy Williams was expecting it. But he had to get rid of it or he would have got planted again. Do you think that Yarnell's just the less mobile option than Holstein. So defending this pit offense with Yarnell in there is very different than defending it with Holstein. Holstein has that mobility aspect of it. So Wes Goodwin, the defense coordinator, he knows that his defensive linemen, they can take off because the threat of the quarterback run really isn't there. Tigers crowd the line again, and they drop Desmond Reed for a loss. R.J. Mickens, Dabo Sweeney, and Wes Goodwin told us playing as well as he ever has. And he's been there for a long time. This is 57th career game. And there's an injured offensive lineman. It's Ryan Jacoby. Who, as we said, been in and out lately. Out for the entire game last week with an ankle injury. He's tried to fight through. Just got 
injured against Cal and has been trying so hard to get back but really hasn't been at 100 percent they had hoped that since he missed last week gave him last week off he'd be able to come back for the stretch run but see him down here and in some pain has got to be a little concerning for Pat Narduzzi and his staff. Don't want to interrupt the referee Stuart Mullins but you did see that aerial coverage was provided by Goodyear road tested and game ready are you ready for the road Goodyear more driven love the aerial shots whenever we come to Pittsburgh the downtown is spectacular along the rivers when you come through the Fort Pitt tunnel and all of a sudden <laughs> there's the skyline right in front of you it is gorgeous it's a great town it really is great people here and there's the skyline Thank you Scott Johnson and <laughs> Phil Dean leading our great crew today. Big weekend here as well. The Steelers will host a big home game here tomorrow against the Baltimore Ravens. Fifth punt for Caleb Junko. Antonio Williams on the run. That's been a good punt cover team all year long. They limited that one to eight yards so Pitt says we want to stop the run <laughs> and they have and uh, but they're trailing but it looks like they're settling in a little bit now against the pass yeah they are and really this game I think in the second half we're going to see this Clemson offense be a little more aggressive on some downfield throws because of the commitment that we've seen from Pitt to stopping the run and being aggressive and trying to pursue Kate Klubnick, there are some opportunities behind the defense, behind the safeties. So I'd anticipate them trying to hit those spots in the second half. They talk about hitting Klubnick. He's been hit seven times so far today. Flag before the snap. Full start. Offense, number 53, five-yard penalty, first down. Well, if the officials look like they haven't shaved, it's because they haven't. Stuart Mullins and this crew participating in No Shave November, and they're doing it for charity. Good for them. These officials, every member of this crew, donating portions of their pay for every game in November to pancreatic cancer research. T.J. Moore, the run and catch. So that means we're not going to be critical of the officials today, at least for another three or four plays. <laughs> they have a very hard job, and they do it exceptionally well. Nine-yard gain for Moore. And a lot of good guys, too. When you uh, get the chance to talk to officials, Matt Austin excluded, of course, uh, they're <laughs> generally a good bunch of guys. They are. <laughs> really care about the game and feel like they're giving back to the game when they're out there on the field. So I always appreciate their contributions. And Matt, of course, is the best. And Klubnik goes down. Kyle Lewis there again. Four sacks now for Pitt. And this just goes to show you, I mean, Clemson's dealing with problems, too. I mean, they have an offensive line that's kind of been remade. They lost their left tackle on the first play of the game. So the right side now, you have Walker Parks, who's playing right tackle. He's not really in line or not communicating properly with Harris Sewell, which allows Lewis to run right between the two of them and sack the quarterback. So just you can tell offensive line issues on both sides with the miscommunication because the guy's playing out of position led to that sack more than anything. Now I know that Clemson knows that Pittsburgh's going to stop the run. That's always their first priority. But so you have to mix in the run every now and then. I mean, Phil Maffa is in the witness protection program right now. <laughs> He's their best player, according to Dabble Swing. Yeah, I, mean, I think at some point, maybe not in a two-minute drill situation, but in the second half, you have to stay committed to it because Phil Moffat, 230 pounds, he's going to get better as the game goes along. And any game that he doesn't have 20-plus carries is a game that you probably didn't execute the plan correctly. Flubnick throws, caught, and 
and lunging for the first down is Antonio Williams. Huge play. He had Chris Brookins right on his back. But Williams got 11, and he's had a huge first half, including both touchdowns. Maffa remains the running back. They throw it to him by the sideline. He scampers out of bounds at the 42. So 26 seconds. Clemson out of timeouts. And they've had trouble with field goal kicking. Nolan Hooser has a strong leg, but he hasn't made one longer than 38 yards this year. They've had problems with field goals being blocked. Five of them. Pittsburgh crowds the line again. Pitt rushed five. Williams lunges, but did not get out of bounds. He got a first down. They'll stop the clock for a moment. You want to clock it now. Since he didn't get out of bounds, you need to clock it. Waste the down, not the time. 15 seconds in the half. Dabo Sweeney's team at the 50-yard line. You need to be real mindful of how you execute here. Obviously, Cade Clubbing knows a sack kills the drive. Anything tackled short of the sticks kills the drive with no timeouts. You have to work the sideline or anything that you work in the middle of the field has to be beyond 10 yards because the first down obviously will stop on the ready for the clock will start on the ready for play, but will stop initially after the first down. Timeout pit. Ben Arduzzi has a streak he'd like to continue. Each of the previous eight seasons, the Pitt Panthers under Narduzzi have defeated at least one team ranked in the top 25. They haven't done that yet this year. They'll have a shot today against 20th ranked Clemson. We talked at the top, Greg, about how important this is for Clemson and the ACC. They have to have it in all likelihood. But it's also, you know, if they could finish as a two-loss team, finish 10 and two overall, that would require wins against Pitt, a team that was ranked in the top 20 last week, South Carolina, a team that's in the top 25 right now. There'll be a 10 and two team that would certainly be considered for the 12-team playoff. I think they, they would need some style points. I think they would need to look really, really good because right now they got a lot of ground to make up and they need a little bit of chaos. They need some help. But I don't think the playoff chances are completely eliminated for Clemson in the event in which they finish on a really high note. Maffa hasn't carried the ball since 12-20 remained in this quarter. 12 minutes ago, game action. They're in field goal range now. Williams down at the 32. He wants them to clock it. And they will. And here comes the field goal team. And if you're a Clemson fan, you're holding your breath. As we said, they've had five field goals blocked. Dabo Sweeney said the biggest problem has been poor protection on the left side of their field goal protection group. Last week, Hooser had one blocked, and Dabo said it was a low kick. It was blocked and returned 77 yards by the Hokies for a touchdown. There was a timeout. And of course, Hooser blasted one. This will be a 51-yard try. And it's been a nightmare, and it's mo mostly been the left side. I mean, it. No one ever want to point fingers, but just look at where the guys are coming from. The left side has really struggled the last few weeks, and Davo Sweeney so frustrating. A touchdown last week on the return, but they are cautiously optimistic that some of those woes are in the rearview mirror because of the return of Peter Woods, who now is going to be playing that left tight end spot to secure the left side. You know, when he's been in there, they haven't had blocks. It's when he has not been available, they've had the problem, and there he is out there. Hooser, very highly touted kicker, had 65 field goals in high school, Cornelius, North Carolina. That's the all-time national field goal record. From a Clemson family, his mom, Sherry, was a soccer star. Sister Elle is on the soccer team now. Dad Scott was an excellent pitcher. That one has plenty of altitude, and it's good. Longest of his career, first of 50-plus. 
And Dabo Sweeney thrilled. He said, the kicker's good. We can just protect it. We have a chance. Yeah, and got to love it. Snap is good. Hold was good. Gets the laces out. Perfect end over end with plenty of distance inside the right upright. Excellent execution, good ops. And I've never seen a head coach and a quarterback be so fired up for a kick. And yeah, they gave Hoosier some love as he ran off, but they were hugging the offensive line for running off and protecting as well as they did right there. Well, things you take for granted until they don't execute. The holder, by the way, is Clay Sweeney, Dabo's son and Kathleen. Eighth straight season, all of the placements have been done by one of the Sweeney's back to Will to start the 2017 season. Will, Drew, and now Clay. The holding dynasty. Last non-Sweeney to hold Seth Ryan in the 2016 National Championship game, the last point of that win. The son of Rex Ryan. And the Sweeney's have done an excellent job. It's not nepotism. Kick off your NFL Sunday at 10 a.m. with the countdown crew on ESPN and the app. They'll have the early breaking stories, injury updates, previews of each game right up to kickoff. And then Monday night football on ESPN, Deportes and the ESPN Plus. The Houston Texans and the Dallas Cowboys, Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. It feels like the Texans have had a lot of injuries, but they're 6-4 and four in first place in the AFC South. Cowboys are three and six. Likely the last play of the half. Desmond Reed goes out of bounds with a three yard gain. Pitt will, Pitt will get the ball first. Robert Gunn kicks off. Kenny Johnson, no chance for return. Here's Molly McGrath. Well, Pitt head coach Pat Narduzzi confirmed that left guard Ryan Jacoby is out for the rest of the game. Running back Daniel Carter will also not return with injury. And Narduzzi was really frustrated with their offensive line and their protection in the first half, saying they need to protect better. But also, Nate Yarnell needs to trust his receivers a little bit better and make some big plays in the passing game. Narduzzi addressed those receivers, dropped balls in the first half, challenged their skill players. Big time players make big time plays. Now is the time to do that, guys. Yarnell was 13 for 20 in the first half. They give him an easy throw, a screen, trying to get Reed involved. There he goes, down the sideline and out near midfield. They're going to spot him at the 47-yard line, a gain of 22. I love the play call from Kate Bell. First play of the second half, how do you slow down this pass rush? Screens and draws. They start with the screen. It's a nice play to start the second half. Jason Collier, Jr., 60-year senior, who's replaced Jacoby at left guard, number 50. There's Reed again. That's their chance to answer the question we addressed the on-camera moment ago, Greg. Desmond Reed, and now he's slow to get up. Pointing his left knee after the 10 yard gain. We've already lost his backup, Daniel Carter, who was carted off the field in the first half. That's potentially significant, too. I mean, if Reed is at all limited, that really hampers what this offense can become. He's so dynamic, not just as a running back, but as a pass catcher out of the backfield and in the return game. So definitely a big sigh of relief on the pit sideline, seeing him walk off under his own power. Like, as he was going to the ground, pointing to that left leg, but didn't really favor it as he walked to the sideline, but keeping his helmet on, bouncing around, and hopefully he'll return here momentarily. Derek Davis Jr. is now the running back. He has just 17 carries all year. Redshirt Jr. from right here in Pittsburgh. A blitz. They picked it up. The short throw and a big hit by R.J. Mickens on Poppy Williams. They did well to hang on to that one. 
man, that was a big collision there with Mickens and kind of threw him into a blow up. You can see, trying to get the ball out quicker as Sammy Brown ejected earlier from targeting and Wade Woodaz, who's out with a contusion. Yarnell sacked again by T.J. Parker. Five sacks for the Clemson defense. And just right around the right-hand side, you'd think the tight end, Bartholomew, might be able to talk him out of it, take away a little space, but he releases out into the route. And right tackle Jackson Brown just can't contain T.J. Parker. they got to have to help these tackles with tight ends and running backs. you got to chip at the line of scrimmage because three rushes up the field, they just can't win that battle. Four sacks in the first half for Clemson. They're most in the first half since November of 2021. And they had six against Wake Forest. Yarnell deep and almost intercepted. Thrown into double coverage. He was trying to get it to Poppy Williams. Kylan Griffin and Khalil Barnes both there for the Tiger defense. And Yarnell showing kind of his relative inexperience. Watch his eyes and watch how it just takes the free safety right to it. His eyes are on that route from the very beginning. Never looks it off, stares it down, which allows the free safety to get over the top and nearly intercept it. You have to look off that free safety because Kylan Griffin's going to read the quarterback every time and make the play. Pitt now one for eight on third down. Caleb Junko's six punt is end over end, and it's a fair catch by Antonio Williams of the best first half of his career. Let's look at today's road test brought to you by Goodyear. Well, it's Kate Klubnik and some of the intermediate and downfield passing game does a great job negotiating the zone dropper up and over the top on a nice gain. A little, a little later, you got pressure off the right hand side. He slides away and throws a perfect strike into a tight window for a touchdown. Then a little later, he sees his best wide receiver on a safety one on one. Knows that Williams going to set him up with the perfect route, anticipates the throw, and there's nobody home. Kate Klubnik really had a nice first half. 20 of 26, 242, and a couple touchdowns. If you could just eliminate the sacks, he'd really be cooking with gas. He was sacked four times. Maffa, who had eight carries in the first half, but seven of them were in the first quarter. He didn't have one in the final 12 minutes plus of the first half and he got stacked up by Rasheem Biles a one yard gain thought it would be a layup for him to get the 19 yards he needed today to get to a thousand for the year but he has six just hasn't really had any space whatsoever I mean a long run of six yards too so he's got one run that went for six the rest were met at or behind the line of scrimmage that's why you were an academic All-American <laughs> That pass batted down. The diving attempt to catch it made by T.J. Moore. Rasheem Biles got a hand on it. Very active linebacker group for Pat Narduzzi and Randy Bates. A good job, too. Biles knows he can't get home, so he instead leaps up and tips the pass and sets up another third and long. And Pitt really didn't bring a whole lot of pressure on third and long in the first half. We mostly showed pressure and dropped out. Now let's see in the second half that they adjust and start to ramp up the aggressiveness. Clemson four out of eight today on third down. Quick throw out wide and nowhere near the first down yardage. Brandon George ran the play down, but there's a flag down. Personal foul, face mask, defense, number 30, 15-yard penalty, first down. Agonizing for George and Pat Narduzzi. And man, so frustrating as George is going by, that left hand gets up into the face mask, and it's an easy call for the official. Just a huge, huge mistake, and Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator, the level of frustration Giving a freebie away like that when you're off the field has got to just kill you. Well, the offense struggling, needed a quick three and out field position. Continue momentum, club nick into a crowd. The ball's out! Now they're rolling in an incomplete pass. 
The umpire says incomplete pass. Now it's close. They try to hit burning stool right there. It looks like he never really secures it. And as soon as he goes to kind of reel it in, Rasheem Biles with that left hand goes in and breaks it up. I think that's a good call by the official. That ball was never secured, and an incomplete's correct. And the umpire had a great look at it. Johnny Forte, there's Klubnik out of bounds. Crowd boos, they didn't like the call. They were upset with the officiating the loss last week to Virginia. A couple of things, including Virginia got a do over on a fourth down play that Pitt had stopped on fourth and one because the officials weren't in position. Virginia did it over again, picked up a huge first down with about six minutes to go. There was also a holding penalty when Pitt thought they had a two point conversion to tie it at 21. They wound up not getting it on the subsequent play. Third down and about two. A long two, a short three, and they get it. Moff of the ball carrier, and the crowd still boos. Ten catches today for Antonio Williams. The tenth was on that face mask play, and that is a career high for him. And he was already over 100 yards in the first half, his first career 100 yard receiving game. In his 29th career game, he had 113 receiving yards at the half, 115 now. Fake to Maffa. Klubnik hit as he throws, and it is broken up. Troy Stellano, the target. Donovan McMillan there to knock it away. Good pressure up front by Pitt. I mean, excellent job of kind of forcing Klubnik to. Throw it off his back foot, doesn't have enough, and Stilato, as a result, the ball kind of dies and allows McMillan to recover and break it up. Just a great pressure and a great job in the back end. Francis Bruwu, who's a backup defensive lineman, freshman out of Westerville, Ohio, made the hit. They are putting the hits on Klubnik. He's under duress again and threw it over the head. Of Maffa, and that's perhaps an indication of what Randy Bates was talking about. You hit the quarterback often enough, you start to affect him. And that throw was nowhere near Maffa, and what was really just a check down. Yeah, I mean, this is it. I mean, easy throw, piece of cake. One that Kate Klubnik makes a hundred times in his sleep, and you see him clap it off there. The rush is certainly having a little bit of an effect on his accuracy. And here in a third and ten, they anticipated pressure through a quick screen the last time. This time, let's see if they actually bring the pressure. They do, and Maffa just stuck one hand out to receive that one. Now clearly, the relentless pressure is having an impact, and it's kind of a typical pit game on defense, as you said, Greg. They're going to give you some shots down the field. You may get a couple, but they're also going to mess up your offense a lot. Yeah, and they're going to be able to overload your protection, too. I mean, yes, they're very aggressive. They'll roll the dice. You can get behind them, but you better be able to block them. And that time, they scheme up the protection perfectly, overload it on the left side, and and force Klubnik out of the pocket. Swanson to punt. Desmond Reed is back for the punt. So apparently that injury suffered uh, not serious enough to keep him out of the game. He makes a fair catch, the 18. 43-yard punt. 17-7, that was our score at the half. It's still our score in the third. In the ACC, Florida State, the preseason favorite. Yeah, it's been that kind of a year for Mike Norvell. One and nine overall. Scapegoated some assistant coaches. SMU leading the pack, and they are legit. If you haven't seen the Mustangs play, Clemson and Miami, the other one lost teams. First year in the ACC for SMU, just the one loss overall to an undefeated BYU team. And Yarnell, he got hit as he throws, and it's incomplete. Tenant for Reed. Pat Narduzzi wanted a flag. It was Barrett Carter in coverage, and uh, Reed definitely has a little bit of a limp. Looked like, I mean, he just took a big hit, Yarnell did, as 
Peter Woods, number 11, applies the pressure and the ball just a little bit too far for Reed, who had a favorable matchup, but just can't reel it in. Nate Yarnell, the backup. Prior to today, getting his first start of the year with Eli Holstein out with a second concussion in 16 days. Yarnell, man wide open. Desmond Reed tripped up from behind. Barrett Carter saved the touchdown. 35-yard gain to the Clemson 48. And just the matchup I just told you about, really favorable matchup. You got a great pass-catching running back working against a linebacker on the end of the line of scrimmage. He breaks inside for the seam in the big play. And the play-action pass, and he gets planted by T.J. Parker. Fumble, Clemson ball. Jaheim Lawson recovered the fumble. And Ryan Bayer, their starting offensive tackle, is limping to the sideline. And just right around right tackle, Jackson Brown again goes Parker. That's a matchup they've won time and time again. This time, Yarnell never sees it, getting ready to throw it, has only one hand on the football, and it is dropped where it's quickly recovered by Clemson. I mean, Pitt has to help their tackles. Them leaving them on islands one-on-one -on -one all game long. They can't win that battle. They have to help them because Yarnell's taking the beating and shouldn't be. Six sack for Clemson. The first takeaway for the Clemson defense. They're most in a game since that 2021 contest against Wake Forest. Maffa. Had some running room. He's down at the 41 yard line with a six yard pickup. And now he is two yards away from a thousand. Came in averaging 109 rushing yards per game. And with six 100 yard games out of the nine they've played this season, including the last two. Stacked up today. Against the pit defense that stuffs the run with regularity, slipped on the handoff, and his knee was down. So they blow it dead, and they'll mark it back at the 45-yard line. So the drive to a thousand yards loses four. It just doesn't have the footing. Left foot goes out. And he's down right there. Good job by the official and Clemson. Yet again in a third and long. And the go-to guy in third down today has been Antonio Williams. He's number zero. He's lined up in the slot. I'd be looking in that direction. Klubnik running out of time and a huge loss. Brandon George took him down. Back near the 40-yard line. Lubbock's eyes are this direction, but they really should be working in the other direction. Watch this receiver right here. I mean, boom, right there. Wide open. That's a first and 10. Instead, Klubnik's on the wrong side, and it results in a big sack. Just poor decision by Klubnik to work the left when he should have been on the right. Loss of 13. We're midway through the third quarter. Clemson still leading by 10. Swanson just getting loose, a muff punt. Picked back up by Reed, but nowhere to go, and Pitt will, uh, Pitt will start at the eight-yard line after a 50-yard punt. And an anxious moment on the return. ESPN College Football presented by Tyson Brand is brought to you by Burger King. They're here. Three new delicious Whopper sandwiches created by fans. Get to BK now. Aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, celebrating the challenge of road games everywhere. Are you ready for the road? Goodyear more driven. Last road game of the season for Clemson. Finished with non-conference home games against the Citadel and the rivalry game with South Carolina. Worst starting field position of the day for Pitt from its own eight. Derek Davis. 
nice first down run. He got six. Gabe Klubnik hit 11 times, sacked five times. He's thrown for 244, but only two of those yards here in the third quarter. Nate Yarnell is also taking a beating from the defense and from his receivers. It's three drops now by these pit receivers picking up right where they left off last week where Pat Narduzzi said they dropped nine passes. So they've got to secure it. Coverage when you have an opportunity to make a play in the passing game, you got to reel it in. And here on a third down passing situation, they've left these tackles on islands all game long. Will they finally help these tackles against this Clemson pass rush? Bartholomew back to the end of the line, but he goes out as a receiver. Flutter ball, and it's incomplete. Intended for Poppy Williams. Ashton Hampton, an emerging star, freshman corner in coverage. That drop on second down was huge. Yeah, and this ball would have been a tough catch. One that you would like that your receiver might be able to reel in, but a great job by Hampton playing all the way through the whistle, knocking it free. Seventh punt for Junko. Ooh, he might be tired. What a great bounce, though. Antonio Williams, surrounded by blue shirts, takes cover on the near sideline. Here's Matt Berry. All right, Sean McDonough, Fairfield by Marriott Studio update. We have a developing situation in Texas and Arkansas. Jaquinda Jackson punches it in to make it 13-7 Texas. Arkansas just tapped on a field goal. It is 13-10, Texas over Arkansas in the fourth. All right, Matt, here at 17-7. Clemson with the ball. Cade Klubnik is one for six in this half for two yards after a big first half. Second biggest first half of his career. At 378 against App State earlier this year. Phil Maffa lost one with that catch. This Clemson offense, uh, they really, outside of the one drive where they went 75 yards in three plays, they really haven't tried to take advantage of the deep ball. I mean, this is a very aggressive defense. These safeties are constantly looking in the backfield, and yet they haven't tried it. They must not trust their protection, but, man, they got to take a shot at some point. Maffa drop for a loss. Rasheem Biles, what a game he's had. Sophomore from Columbus, Ohio. and used the snap count to their advantage earlier in an obvious passing situation. Let's see if Clemson has a little hesitation before they snap it, see if they can drop hit offside again in a third and long. They bring their six-man pressure. It's caught by Williams, and he won't get to the first down marker. Driven back by Javon McIntyre and Rylan Gandy. About three yards short of the line to gain. This would be a situation sometimes where you might look at the analytics and, and think about the possibility of going, but with how Clemson's defense has been playing, punt, punt. I feel great. About analytics, the punt right here. analytics. <laughs> Make this a challenged Pittsburgh offense drive the length of the field. <laughs> Seventh punt for Aiden Swanson. Looks like they're going to, this is, I think, designed to get them to jump. And it doesn't work. Play game, play game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. Why not? Why not? Man, they had it too. I mean, it looked like, it looked like for a moment one of the pit players actually jumped in watch right here right there I mean he's over right there and 
And you can't snap it because your guys are still moving too and everyone moved all at once. But man, for a second there, it looked like he wasn't going to get back on side and they might be rewarded the first down. But Narduzzi's upset because they all moved quickly and felt like they were kind of drawing them off sides. But a little game of cat and mouse right there on a fourth and short. Kick, Reed handles that one cleanly at the pit 16, 44 yard punt. You're watching ESPN College Football presented by Tyson Brand. Time for today's Affleck trivia question. Clemson has won seven of the last nine ACC championships. We don't know which team won the other two feel good about this one yeah I think it's kind of an easy one <laughs> that one is a little easy usually I feel like they're extremely difficult but that one I got Desmond Reed the running back short completion of Mumfield nothing doing there well Pittsburgh the Pitt Panthers in 2021 they beat Clemson on the way to the championship game that year, then beat Wake Forest in the title game, and of course, Florida State. Last year, that's the answer to our Aflac trivia question. Reed's in trouble behind the line of scrimmage. He goes out for a one yard loss. You ever see a program go the way Florida State has this fast? Never. Ever. And now in the portal era, I certainly think it's more possible. I also look at like a Michigan team this year, too, lost so many great pieces, lost Jim Harbaugh. I mean, to go in the other direction that significantly is I alarming. You know, and it was not like people thought Florida's too well, they lost everybody, they're not going to be any good. As we showed earlier, they were the favorite coming right. into this year. Right. I just think the way they handled not getting into the playoff last year when they were left out because of the injury to their quarterback largely really just derailed the whole program. Yarnell throws caught. Kenny Johnson across the 40 to the 43 yard line. 27 yards Yarnell to Johnson. And that was really nicely done by the offensive line too. I mean gave Yarnell plenty of time and that route took a long time to develop. First catch of the day for Johnson. Short completion there to Mumfield, thrown down by Khalil Barnes as we go under three minutes to go in the third quarter. Starting this possession, the two teams had combined for 80 yards of offense in this quarter, five punts. Thirty three yards on this drive for Pitt. Reed to midfield, three yards short of the line to gain. Another stop for TJ Parker. Pat Narduzzi does lean on analytics here, and with it being a two score game and with possessions maybe being at a premium down the stretch, might have two downs to get it here. So if they run it inside, that kind of tells you that they're probably already thinking about that fourth down call. Johnson went in motion. Pressure for Yarnell. He takes it down and runs and lunges for the first down. They list him at 6'6. Six, six. He admitted yesterday he's closer to 6'7. Not the smoothest looking runner, but we saw last week against UVA as well. He can take off if he needs to. He got six there and a first down. Pitt coaches and his teammates were very confident in Yarnell coming into today. Jonathan Mumfield told us that he is a great leader, a competitor, very smart. 
And great recognition by Yarnell. I mean, look how many guys on the right side of the center. You have four Clemson Tigers that are over there. Nobody's really home on the left-hand side because Peter Woods works out to the left. So he takes off and picks up a critical conversion. Eli Holstein was their starting quarterback until this week. He's had a couple of concussions in the last three games. Here's a blitz. Yarnell plenty of time and missed the dump off to Reed, who went leaping for it, then started limping as he landed. And he's going to come off the field. Yarnell thought he was throwing it to himself at six foot six. Instead, he was throwing to the five foot seven Reed. Just a little too high, but look at the reaction. Oh, no! <laughs> well, he's yeah, five six. <laughs> he would have needed to be about six six at least to catch that one. Maybe seven six. Yeah. Either way, just a bad miss there. And once again, third and long, probably two downs to get it here if you're Pitt's offense. Two for two on third down on this drive to get them to three for 11 for the day. Was that a design quarterback run? They faked the handoff to Derek Davis. All of a sudden, Yarnell's Tim Tebow, and he's down about a yard and a half short. And they will go for it on fourth down in the final seconds of the third quarter. Down by 10. Trying to line up quickly. Davis is the running back. Watch just a quick snap here. Potentially, if he stays on the shot, no, he's going to drop back into shotgun. Davis surges. First down, Pitt. So we've got a lead going in the fourth quarter. Got to find a way to finish. Thanks, Coach. It's the 11th play of this pit possession, and it's a completion to Day Day Reynolds for a first down to the Clemson 20 yard line. We're going to mark it back at the 21 yard line. Clemson still leading 17 to 7, despite the fact that the Tigers had 12 yards of offense to Dabo's point in the third quarter. Score hasn't changed. The pits on the move. Nate Yarnell throwing it to the corner of the end zone and complete. Looking for Poppy Williams. Khalil Barnes safety running in coverage at his back turn for a lot of it, but was close to Poppy. And it looked like it was going to be a catch. It looked like it went right through Poppy Williams' hands, and Yarnell threw a really nice ball under the circumstance. I mean, he Oof. took a big shot off the left hand side by Carter. Well, both of these quarterbacks have played courageously, have taken a beating. It's David Lynch, who's the backup quarterback today, you saw number 16. He's a walk on. Second and 10. Catch and run, Desmond Reed. Lunged for the pylon. They'll mark him out at the two. R.J. Micken saved the touchdown for Clemson, a 19-yard gain for Pitt. He tried. He, wow, I mean, what an effort. Looks like that right foot was in when he leapt. And he, I mean, it might have been able to cross over the top of the pylon. I mean, that was an unbelievable effort by Reed. He started limping toward the sideline. It's R.J. Mickens who's down for Clemson. Pat Narduzzi gave him a big hug, and I think he was also saying, Greg, you're not coming off the field. <laughs> no. Turn, you're not limping to the sideline. You're heading back out yeah. of the field for first and goal from the two. That'll be the play when we come back. Pittsburgh down by seven, but on the doorstep. Tremendous athletic play by Desmond Reed. Look at how close he gets to getting this ball over the pylon for a touchdown. He looked at several angles, not conclusive enough to turn it into a touchdown, but a spectacular effort. R.J. Mickens out of the game, first and goal pit. Derek Davis collared at the line of scrimmage. D. Creighton made the tackle. The freshman who's in for Sammy Brown, who's playing a lot more in the absence of Wade Woodaz. And ordinarily, this would be Daniel Carter down at the goal line on offense for Pitt, but he left injured in the first half. Yeah, and here, low red zone, I want to look in the direction of my tight ends. I mean, I have a big time tight end in Gavin Bartholomew, six foot five, 
250 pounds. I want to look in his direction. Tight ends in this part of the field, so tough to They're cover. They're taking a lot of time here, and they don't want to use a timeout in this situation. Play clock at two. One. They're not get, did they get it off? Barely, and they got it to Bartholomew. And he's down at the one. They just did get it off. T.J. Parker, the primary tackler. Big play call for Cade Bell. Two downs to get it if you're Cade Bell, too. I mean, are you sure about that? I think so. I think you, this part of the field, you can kick a field goal with your kicker from the 50-yard line. I think you got to get the seven here in a 10-point game. Mark it back. Outside the one. Derek Davis, the running back. Oh, they flinched. But it's not illegal movement. Jake Overman thought he committed a penalty. And now a timeout called by Pitt. I mean, this is a disaster for the Pitt Panthers at the goal line. Wow. I mean, what a I cannot believe and Yarnell is beside himself. Understandably, I cannot believe they did not call Jake Overman for a false start there. I mean, he moved with sudden. I mean, as soon as he goes by, watch number 87 right here. I mean, look at that movement. I mean, let's I, bring in Matt Austin. Matt, should that have been a penalty? Yeah, that's absolutely a false start. He was simulating the snap. He missed the snap count, jumped towards the line, as Greg said, but that should have been a foul. And I mean, then you have third and goal from the six. I mean, that's a potential massive sequence for Pitt right there to avoid the penalty. Darnell upset. I mean, everything about this since Reed didn't quite get it over the pylon has been jittery for the Panthers. Longest drive of the game by far for Pittsburgh. The previous long was seven plays. Do they trust the new quarterback to throw it down here? They're about to have a legal formation, too. They don't have enough guys on the last scrimmage. Here's Davis into the pile. There's a flag down. Davis and again, it's Davis in because Carter is not available to Pat Narduzzi. Peter Woods, the tackler, with help from T.J. Parker. Well, if you're Dabo, would you take this? Or make it fourth down no, and I, goal from the two? Yeah, I would take it. Uh, I mean, I, I can't believe that they come out of a timeout and they still don't have a formation lined up appropriately. Offense. More than four players in the backfield. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. And this right here, I mean, this is your receiver. This is your culprit. He's off the ball. And he has to be on the ball because you have this guy in motion. So that's just a big mistake there. Yep. And as bad as this has been for Pitt right here, if I'm Dabo Sweeney, you know, I'm all safe. Run your fourth down play or kick the field ball. You know, and to back him up now, give him two more plays, give him a little more room if you're inclined to throw it. I don't think it's an easy decision. No. Given I, I, how bad, you know, they, they don't have their short yardage back. They have a quarterback where they probably don't want to have to throw the ball. It's been a disaster to this point. Make him play fourth down. Yeah, I get it 100%. But if you're on a third and goal, number 86, this is where I'm looking. Bartholomew's your guy. Play clock at one. They don't get it off. My goodness. Brave game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Third down. Yeah, fans booing, and they should be. I cannot quite comprehend how bad the last two minutes have been for the Pitt Panthers. As far as goal line execution, it cannot get any worse than what I've just seen the last few plays. I mean, unbelievable, inexcusable. Can't happen. You see now the lineup, everybody's making sure, okay, let's make sure we're the right people going in motion. There's a flinch on the offensive line. Full start. Offense. Number 55. Five yard penalty. Third down. Well, they jumped offside on three straight plays on defense. 
in the first half. It's the right guard. B.J. Williams, just a little flinch right there. Five more yards. And uh, fortunately, <laughs> they have a kicker with a strong leg because they're backing up. They were at the two-yard line. Ten penalties against Pitt now. From the 16-yard line, 11 minutes to go. Nate Yarnell, corner of the end zone. Over everything, looked like a throwaway. Crowd really letting the Panthers, players and coaches here. I think they all have to own this debacle. There's really no excuse for what just transpired. I mean, you're slow. You almost had to delay a game on the second down play. You have, an, you have to call a timeout. You burn a timeout. Then you come out of the timeout. You have illegal formation. Then you have a false start. I mean, I just cannot possibly explain how bad that operation was. Well, here's Ben Sauls. They have to have it. And they get it. He made 15 in a row to start the year. That's the uh, pit record for consecutive field goals made. 35 yarder. 10.55 to go. <laughs> Despite all of that, that's hard to believe. It's a one score game. Back in 1921, I did a basketball game here with Bill Raftery and Jay Billis years ago. They had a shot of the cathedral over some billboards, and Billis said, "Yeah," and it was built from the top down. <laughs> and for a minute, I thought he was I'm like, "Huh? How'd they do that?" <laughs> I realized, got I'm you. not that got bright. Me. Got me. Mm -hmm. Somebody else won more the night before. I think the rap perhaps. That was it. So 17 play, eight and a half minute drive. Got Pittsburgh only three. And they're down by seven. Clemson will start at the 25. Here's Matt. All right, John, Colorado trying to put away a pesky Utah team today. 28 16. Chador having another good one. He turned the ball over a couple of times, but seeds this one right down the middle at that point. Makes it 35 16. But Utah has scored and they have the ball back. Also, coming up, 330 window. Remember, Thomas Castellanos has transferred from BC. Grayson James now the starting quarterback for Bill O'Brien. That coming up against SMU, bottom of the hour. Clemson's done nothing on offense here in the second half. Klubnik high throw. And incomplete, trying to get it to Williams. Looked like a couple of the defenders for Pitt might have had a chance for an interception as Brandon George gave Klubnik his latest greeting. And Bill Moffa just completely blew the protection. I mean, he goes across and never sees George blitzing right up the middle. Unfortunate at that time that Klubnik was able to get rid of the ball, but that was almost a massive collision. Tale of two halves and nothing from the run game. They have three yards rushing as a team. It stays that way and they win. It would be the lowest total in a win in FBS football this season. Antonio Williams can't hang on. He has 11 catches, but nine of those were in the first half. As has been the case often throughout the years in the Pat Narduzzi era, the defense leading the way for Pitt. Third and ten here. They've dropped out on third and ten pretty much all game long. They've showed pressure and they've dropped out. Let's see if this is the one time that Randy Bates, the defensive coordinator, decides to heat up Klubnik and bring some extra pressure. Looks like they're going to. Klubnik forced back. Throws up for grabs. Caught on the sideline, but out of bounds. T.J. Moore with Rashad Battle there. A Clemson three and out. Just a great job there by Rashad Battle, knowing where he's at, eliminating the space, and understanding you can just push him right out of bounds. <laughs> and Bates encouraging him to do so from the booth. Well, he's one of our favorite coaches to talk to, Randy Bates, the 64-year-old defensive coordinator here in his seventh year.
Swanson's eighth punt ties a career high. Same total 2022 against South Carolina. And it's a short punt. Thirty three yard punt. SEC on ABC coming up out of the hour LSU's Florida and tonight at 730 the big game of the weekend Tennessee and Georgia number seven against number 12 Georgia off the loss at Ole Miss last week. Nate Yarnell been hit with regularity some drop balls not very good protection in front of him. But poised to go down the field and tie it. Woo, dangerous throw on first down. And Day Day Reynolds is dropped for a loss, led by Avion Terrell. A loss of three. So far, I mean, this Clemson defense has been relentless with their pressure. And they haven't really been able to get home because now Pitt has made an adjustment and they're keeping tight ends and running backs to help out with their tackles. But Wes Goodwin's going to continue to lean on those edge rushers who have really dictated their terms in this game. Yarnell caught, took the ball a while to get to Day Day Reynolds. Ashton Hampton was there, the son of Alonzo Hampton, uh, the head coach at Arkansas Pine Bluff. He's on third. And about seven. Third down, six, nine and a half to go. A run. Reed bounced off, hits at the line of scrimmage and got the first down. Eight yards on the run for Reed out of Miami Gardens, Florida. That was a really nice run by Reed. And man, on third and six to pick it up on the ground, that's a huge morale boost for this offensive line. They clearly picked up the tempo here. They were a very fast paced team earlier in the year that slowed down in recent weeks man open and Poppy Williams stumbled to stay on his feet got the first down 12 more for Yarnell and the pit offense. They're at the Clemson 34. And this would be a spot right here first and 10 plus territory. Heavy play action, throw it over their head. I'm taking a shot right here if I'm offensive coordinator Cade Bell. Yarnell throws it up, and CJ Lee got knocked down by Avion Terrell. And Lee is face down on the field. Pat Narduzzi went sprinting down there to check on his wide receiver. Sincere Lee, they call him CJ, transfer from Western Carolina along with Reed and Cade Bell, the offensive coordinator. Very clear right there. Terrell arrived way too early, knocks Lee to the ground before the ball arrives, so a good call by the official. C.J. Lee being carted off. They've put a brace on his right leg. Big collision. With Terrell as he was trying to make the play. He got the pass interference, but an unfortunate injury to the right leg of Lee. Well, they had a little rhythm on offense at the 19 they've gone 39 yards in four plays already a little banged up at receiver entering today we mentioned day day Reynolds playing through a shoulder injury pressure brought at Yarnell out wide for Poppy Williams and he could not make Ashton Hampton miss in the open field no gain. We were also told by Pat Narduzzi yesterday that Kenny Johnson was involved in a car crash. It was rear-ended. 
early in the week and was sore all week missed some practice time but he's been out there trying to play through it today their leading receiver has just one catch today on the field right now on second and ten almost midway through this fourth quarter Yarnell steps into the throw Bartholomew first down the talented tight end in his final home game for Pitt with an 11 yard gain. This part of the field is where you really would like to run the football. I mean, as that field condenses, it gets very difficult to be effective throwing it down here. Lean on the run game if you can. First and goal. Back to back. Impressive drives. Receiver open. Bartholomew. Touchdown. No Wade would ask Sammy Brown ejected for targeting R.J. Mickens. The veteran leader of that secondary hasn't played since the uh, collision with Reed near the pylon. Pat Narduzzi, very analytics driven, playing for the tie here. And gets it off the foot of Ben Sauls with 7.05 to go. Bartholomew, his second touchdown catch of his senior season and this is asking a lot of D Creighton who's in after Sammy Brown was ejected earlier he's one on one coverage against the outstanding Bartholomew he gets behind him it's perfectly lofted over the top by Yarnell and the tight end secures it for his second touchdown of the year just a terrific design and taking advantage of a guy that really wasn't going to be out there if not for the targeting foul earlier. Pat Narduzzi, we talked about senior day yesterday, mentioned Bartholomew, said he had a chance to leave. He could have made money in the portal, but he wanted to stay and finish his career with his teammates. This made a huge catch. And how impressive has Nate Yarnell been? Yeah. <laughs> Hasn't thrown an interception, has thrown a touchdown now, six for six on that drive, 28 out of 42 for the game. And that's while well, being pressured and hit with regularity. In his first start of the season, his fourth of his career, 2022, was start at Western Michigan when the top two quarterbacks were hurt. Last year, after Phil Nikovic and Christian Veyer were ineffective, he started the last two games of the season, beat Boston College, lost to Duke. First start of this season. And he has found a rhythm with Kate Bell calling the plays. Yeah, I mean, he's really done a great job. Weather the storm took a lot of hits. I mean, my goodness, that jersey is, shows you just how many hits he's taken, but he's battled, man. Well, Clemson needs to find some offense now. They flip it forward to Antonio Williams, who had more there if he could have stayed on his feet. Went out at the 31. They get six on first down. They played rope a dope here in the second half. I think Mike Tyson landed more punches last night than Dabo Sweeney's <laughs> offense has here in the second half. Really needing getting drive together here for Garrett Riley, the offensive coordinator. I mean, they have no rhythm whatsoever. They're one dimensional, and they've had a tough time protecting as well. Klubnik hit as he throws. Brinning stool the catch. Flag down. They're going to call roughing the passer. And center judge and referee talking about it. Personal foul. Broke in the passer. Defense. Number two. 15 yard penalty. First down. Nate Matt Lack. Pat Narduzzi wanted an audience with the referee Stuart Mullins. He's not going to get it. And he's just right around the outside. There's nobody that blocks him. Klubnik knows immediately. And it didn't look like Matt Lack did anything that was totally out of character. Tried to knock it down, but tackles all the way through. And man, that's one. I can understand Narduzzi's frustration. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see it. I mean, as a quarterback, I know you got to protect those guys. But my goodness, man. 
That's football. And if that's the rule, change the rule back. Yeah. Here's Maffa trying to find some running room to the 46. Let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt Key roughing the passer penalty. What did you think? Well, Sean, you know me. I like to protect the quarterback at all costs, but I agree with you guys. This is not much of a hit. He just runs through the quarterback. There's no hit to his head. The helmets don't even click. He didn't put his weight on the quarterback. It's not late. I, I don't like this call at all. Yeah. And that's a big thing. He made a concerted effort to not land on top of him. He didn't hit him and lift him up. He didn't thrust. He just tried to tip the ball. He's trying to get an explanation now from the center judge who actually threw the flag. And I think that's actually really good. I mean, the veteran here, Matt Lack, going and getting an explanation so he can learn and apply those rules the next yeah. time. But I don't think he did anything wrong. I think that was a bad call. Rashad Battle walking off. So it'll be second and six when play resumes. Six minutes to go. Now a tie game. Clemson led 17-7 at the half. Dabo Sweeney's team's at 27 yards of offense in this second half. They have eight yards rushing for the game. Not yet in field goal range, and bear in mind the field goal kicking has been an adventure. Out of the pistol, haven't seen much of that today. Mafa, a yard short of the first down. And that does get him finally over 1,000 yards for the season. With 21 today on 15 carries, he's up to 1,002. Congratulations to Maffa, a goal he had set for himself. 24th 1,000-yard rushing season in Clemson history. He's the 18th different player. We would anticipate he might add to that total here on a third and short, too. I expect them to hand it to him. They do, and he gets yanked out at the line of scrimmage by Key Thompson. A first year player at Pitt after five at Ohio U where he was an all Mac linebacker last year. Here's the play of the game so far. Fourth down about a yard and a half for Dabo Sweeney and the Tigers. Not a huge team going for it on fourth down but I like the aggressiveness here. The analytics support the decision. I think you got to just try to pitch it looks like maybe pitch it or hand it off tackle to Moffat to the left side. And Pitt needs to stay onside. They do snap it. They pitch it wide. Moffa lost the football. He wasn't going to get there anyway. Jimmy Scott the play for the Pitt defense. And you would think that this motion would influence defenders. But look, there's too many Pitt Panthers on the right side of the formation. They're never able to capture any type of leverage whatsoever. Moffa never really has any chance and a terrific job by the Pitt defense staying at home, being disciplined, and dropping the ball carrier as the defensive coordinator Randy Bates celebrates with his staff. They are going to stop the run above all else and they have today 10 yards rushing for Clemson. Gave up a couple of deep balls in the first half but that pass defense has settled in thanks in large part to the relentless pressure on Cade Klubnik and all of a sudden the pit offense has come to life. Nate Yarnell flips it out wide for Reed runs away from Woods got across the line of scrimmage and that's about it. Now bear in mind that Pitt is a terrific field goal kicker with a very long leg in Ben Sauls who's made a 57 yarder and a 58 yarder and just missed a 59 yarder today. Those other two were earlier in the season. A blitz. Yarnell got hit in the head. Goes forward. Pitt crowd and sideline wants a flag and there is not one on the field. D. Creighton hit him in the head, and Arduzzi's out near the numbers. They're telling him to get back. Wow. 
I mean, that is a massive hit right to the head of a quarterback that looks like he's in a defenseless position. I mean, I'm surprised they're not taking a look at this. Because is that a launch? Is that forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless? I mean, this could potentially be targeting. This could be lots of things. Well, let's bring in Matt Austin. Matt, what say you? Greg, you're exactly right. You don't see a hit like this as targeting very often, but it certainly could be. Because you're right, he makes a big swing. He hits him right in the head. He is a defenseless player. This could very easily be targeting. Or at the very least, Matt, shouldn't it be a penalty of something, even if it's oh, without targeting? Yes, absolutely. It should be a foul for personal foul. I, for I don't know how they missed that. I mean, it's clear as a bell to everybody in the stadium. Well, he was livid with the officiating last week. He talked Pat Narduzzi, the conference office, to Steve Shaw, the national coordinator of officials. And it, it's, it's just outrageous that there's no flag on that play. Now there is a flag on the field back at the 42 yard line to our right. The back judge has a flag down. Have no idea what that's about. Chris LaSala speaking to the side judge. Now what's that flag about? Lyndon Cooper the centers coming off. They continue to fall on both offensive lines. He started every game at center this year. Yeah. Yeah, after discussion. After we look up and see it on the replay board and realize we missed it, we dropped the flag. We now have officiating off scoreboards in stadiums. You remember how mad Kirby Smart was in the game down at Texas, and we have more of the same here. Understandable. I just don't know how you missed that on the field. You call one a moment ago against Pitt that was not a foul. And then this time you have forcible contact. I mean, they're lucky because they already lost one of their linebackers, Sammy Brown, the target. They're lucky that D. Creighton wasn't ejected for targeting there because you could make a case that that was forcible contact to the head or neck area and, of a defensive and, and player. Now let me ask Matt this question. Matt, couldn't the replay booth have helped the officials on the field by saying, we are initiating a review for targeting? Well, they certainly could have, but they can't throw a flag from the booth for just a personal foul. But so can, they, they, can they stop it for targeting? Yes, they can. OK, they, but they, they didn't, didn't even do that for targeting. No, they did not. And let me just say, as far as looking at the Jumbotron, somebody may have peeked up, but also there's eight officials on the field and somebody who's a long ways away may have seen the action. It's hard to throw a flag from the field judge position on a rough in the uh, passer. Five minutes they got later, together. Matt, I have, with all well, due respect, I mean, that that flag appeared minutes later. I, I agree, but stranger things have happened well, on a football field. OK. Terrence Moore is in at the center. Either, now, either way, they got it right. So at least well, they did. The but you know, <laughs> the NCAA the football folks who make the rules, they're going to have to start talking about stuff like this. Because the, the way they got to this call needs to be explained. Now, if you're pit to me, Greg, run time. Take as much time off this clock as you can. Absolutely. And whatever you do cannot take a sack because you're nearing field goal range. How about this? My goodness. This has been a very strange day. Uh, lots of confusion at the snap. Reminiscent of the goal line offense from earlier in this quarter. And, a, you know, and in fairness to Pat Narduzzi's offensive line, I mean, it's. We're struggling to keep track of who's in. Now that Cooper's out, number 50, Jason Collier is in. They've slid guys all over the place. Terrence Moore's in at center. It's just been chaotic along the lines of scrimmage. So the two tackles who started the game are still out there, 77 and 70. And B.J. Williams has been their right guard all year. But Ryan Jacoby had to come out. The recurrence we think of his ankle injury at left guard and now Lyndon Cooper started every game is out at center 12 pit penalties five of them procedures on the offense and again this could be key because 
this guy has a big leg, but this would be a 60 yard plus kick from here. Yarnell, no whistle yet. He thought it was a forward pass, and now the line judge is calling it incomplete. TJ Parker. What an impressive player he is, the sophomore defensive end from Phoenix City, Alabama. Yeah, hand clearly moving forward there and good incompletion, but I don't know if I like the call there. I would have rent, run it, maybe make Clemson burn a timeout. I mean, at this point, bad things could potentially happen. I think they can make it based on what we saw from the field goal kicker earlier. Well, he had enough leg from 59. It was just wide. Here's Reed looking for blocks. He gets them. He does not get the first down. And Pat Narduzzi has a huge decision to make. And it'd be third down. He doesn't have to make it yet. And the penalty earlier in this series, third down and two. It would be interesting if they don't gain anything here on fourth down. Yeah, I'd let that clock tick all the way down, all the way down. I might even just call a timeout considering how significant this down is for Cade Bell and his offense. Wide open receiver in the flat, Reed. First down. He ran over Ashton Hampton at the end. Clemson defense playing without some stalwarts at linebacker and in the secondary. And how do you lose track of Reed? The best player on the pit offense. He'll let it go to the two minute timeout. Now it's Dabo Sweeney who needs to start thinking about using timeouts. What a finish here in Pittsburgh. 17-17, the Tigers and the Panthers. The final two minutes presented by Allstate. Final two minutes brought to you by Allstate. Clemson had a 17 to 7 lead of the half. Pitt has tied it. They have first and 10 with two minutes to go. Desmond Reed ahead for a yard, a yard and a half, a quick timeout called by Dabo Sweeney after Tyler Venables made the tackle. Another backup who's in there. Well, it's been. A season already of wild comebacks for Pitt on their way to 7 and 0. Against Cincinnati, they trailed 27 to 6 in the third quarter and wound up winning 28 27 on a Ben Sauls field goal with 17 seconds to go. Eli Holstein threw three touchdown passes on three straight drives. Following week in the backyard brawl of West Virginia, they were down 10 in the fourth quarter. Rallied to win. On a Derek Davis one yard touchdown run with 32 seconds to go after that touchdown grab you saw from Day Day Reynolds. So trying for their third double digit comeback in the fourth quarter this season. Desmond Reed has rushed for 68. He has nine receptions for 99 yards. Derek Davis is the running back right now. And they flinched again. Wow. Full start. Offense. Number 86. Five yard penalty. Mm, Second down. That is at least the third time, maybe fourth, that coming out of a timeout, they have some type of procedural issue. And this time it's on Bartholomew. Take your turn. I mean, leaning forward just a little bit. Reacting to the movement of the Clemson defense. That's 13 penalties for an even 100 yards. You mentioned the most penalized team on offense over the last two weeks in college football. More of the same today. Can they win despite all the self inflicted wounds? Davis stacked up. Dabo Sweeney uses. Another timeout, Barry Carter leading the way for the Clemson defense. Timeout. 
field goal unit. But I look at this third down and I, I might try to get maybe just a touch aggressive if I were Cade Bell. I'm not talking about throwing it into the end zone by any stretch, but a high percentage completion. I don't know if just handing it up the middle. I might try to get something to the edge where maybe I can break a tackle and go well, score. What are you trying to accomplish with that? Get the first down? Yeah, first down and try to oh, end oh the boy. game with the offense on the field. With a, with a <laughs> depleted offensive line, inexperienced quarterback receivers with cases of the drops. It's a blitz. He's going to get sacked back at the 30. And they just made the field goal longer. T.J. Parker, another big play. Seventh sack for Clemson. An eight-yard loss. I don't like it. You know, it's, it's a low percentage. Third down and 14. It's a low percentage. You're going to get the first down. So you, you, you just turn it into a longer field goal, and you it risk the disaster. Yeah, and your right guard just gets destroyed, too. But I, the, everything's too long developing. I mean, all these guys are into the end zone. I want something quick, something that at least gets you outside a little bit, maybe one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker in the open field. Get Desmond Reed on a little swing route. How many times has he taken the pet ball from behind the line of scrimmage and made a guy miss and he's out the gate? So that's what I would have done. But I would not have let some slow developing up the middle down to the end zone. So here's Sauls. He made 15 straight earlier in the season. Didn't have a miss until two weeks ago at SMU. The 47 yard attempt. The distance is not a problem. No breeze to speak of at all. You see the flag at the top of the stadium. Not really an issue. For the lead for Pittsburgh. On senior day right down the middle. And the veteran telling his teammates, let's not celebrate. It's not over yet. Maybe that's why you drop back, because you know you got money with Sauls right down the middle. Never a doubt. Perfectly struck. Now the Pitt Panthers defense, which has been so great in the second half, flustering, will have the chance. But my goodness. Well, that's the question for Clemson now. I mean, he had a terrific first half throwing the football. And you've done absolutely nothing all of a sudden here in the second half. You've been here before. How hard is it to all of a sudden find something when you've been this stagnant for this long. It's really difficult. And, and to find some rhythm, to inject some life, tempo usually helps that. And the big thing with two-minute drives, just had the conversation with your head coach. If you're Cade Klubnik, you know what you need. You need a field goal, at least. So you have no timeouts to work with. So everything has to be towards the sideline. you got to be mindful of the first down. And the biggest thing about two-minute drives, get the drive started. Your percentage chance of scoring goes up tremendously if you have positive gain on first and 10. Then Sauls to kick off. Jay Haynes back, no chance. Here's Matt Barry. All right, Sean McDonough, while this game is going incredibly long, we have kicked SMU Boston College off on ESPN2. You see SMU undefeated in ACC play right now to the end zone incomplete. So we'll move this over to E1 whenever Clemson Pitt ends. And who knows when that'll be, McDonough? <laughs> you never know. Not a lengthy rivalry, but they have had some memorable games already, the Tigers and the Panthers. And here's another classic. Pitt leads for the first time today. Flubnik steps up, throws, caught. And out of bounds goes Antonio Williams. A little surprised he did that. He just had one pit defender back there. He elected to go to the sideline, not try to make a move, and perhaps get more yardage. 18 yards. They have a true freshman field goal kicker that comes down to that. He's at five blocks. Jake Brenningstool out of bounds. Just shy of midfield. Javon McIntyre the stop. They give him the 50 yard line. No timeouts for Clemson, but they're already to the 50 with 125 to go. Good rhythm so far from Cade Klubnik. Continue to get that ball out of his hands very quickly against his pass rush. He takes off running up 
the middle. First down. Inside the 35. He's going to go. Kane Klubnik. Touchdown, Clemson. 50 yards. They had eight yards rushing for the game before he went 50. Hooser, very important extra point, and it's good. And now a field goal does Pitt no good with 1.16 to go. What an electrifying play by Klubnik. Well, just an amazing job. You see five defenders in the box right here. And what do you have? You have six blockers. When you include Phil Moffa, you know what that means? Bad ball for the defense. And Kate Klubnik sees it. It's perfectly blocked. It's perfectly executed. And then he beats the safety, McMillan, around the edge, gets to the sideline, puts on the Jets in the open field, and he's out the gate. What a great call and what a great execution from Clemson. Dabo Sweeney's loving it as well. No, well, he loves Klubnik. Among many things, his competitive spirit on display there in the celebration. One of the most improved players in the country. And the second longest rush of his career has given them the lead back very quickly. It's the second longest run of his career. He had a 55-yard run against NC State earlier this year. It's a touchback from Robert Gunn. So now Nate Yarnell, they found some rhythm here in the fourth quarter. But he needs to take them 75 yards in a minute 16 with two timeouts. And the one thing you got to be really mindful of in the two minute operation, you're not going to have the same amount of help that you've been able to provide your tackles in the second half, which has led to better protection. So the guy that I'm super concerned about, if I'm the quarterback right here, is number three, T.J. Parker, who has really had a massive impact on this game all game long. He's working against Jackson Brown, the right tackle. That's the one that could win it for Clemson. Yarnell under duress. And it is T.J. Parker right on cue who took him down, wound up with the ball. The officials say it's pit ball. And Pat Narduzzi is down to one timeout. And stunned silence in this crowd after the play of the year for Clemson. A 50 yard touchdown run by Cade Klubnik. Everyone is just absolutely shocked right now. I mean, it looked like everything was going Pitt's way. And then one mistake, one bad call, where they have numbers in the run game and Klubnik's out the gate. Now their defense, who's been teeing off all game long on Nate Yarnell. Eight sacks now for Clemson's defense. It's very hard to move it down the field, an obvious passing situation when you can't protect. Touchdown run for Klubnik, the 18th rushing touchdown of his career. Tied for ninth all time at Clemson among quarterbacks. Yarnell on target. Johnson got just enough to get the first down. Ashton Hampton there for Clemson. They're at the 37. 14 yard play under a minute to go one time out for Pitt. They need a touchdown Yarnell flushed by Parker again throws caught along the sideline near another first down 48 yard line Bartholomew got it for 11 and a fresh set of downs It's been a good job of Yarnell here these last couple plays moving in the pocket Now here where they get to slow it down. They're probably gonna have Bartholomew their tight end Helping out that right tackle. That helps with the pass rush. That's what they've done. That's been the adjustment. Parker has four sacks today for Clemson. Yarnell throws to the sideline. Up for grabs. Incomplete. 
Intended for Poppy Williams. Khalil Barnes had the coverage. Your Kate Bell here. I, I see these new Clemson pass rushers coming on. And I now know I can breathe a slight sigh of relief because TJ Parker's not out there, but you have fresh bodies and they're going to pin their ears back. I'd go screen right here. Because if they overrush the quarterback, you could get Reed, your best ball carrier, in space with a lot of room out in front. I'd go with the screen to the running back here. 43 seconds to go. They fake the toss to Reed, and then that pass is incomplete. Thrown ahead of Poppy Williams. Third down and 10. Cade Bell pondering this critical play call. Parker on the sideline for Clemson at the moment. As is Peter Woods, they're a little gassed. It's up third. Clemson, you hate to have them off the field in this very likely passing situation. Been looking down that direction to Johnson. Playing way off Johnson. Yarnell steps up. Yarnell fires, caught, first down. Poppy Williams to the 35-yard line. They're moving again, but they're running out of time. 31 seconds to go, 17-yard game. Yarnell has to get rid of it, does, and he got it to Reed. Reed ducks down, very near the line to gain. No signal from the officials if it's a first down. It's not, so the chains don't move. The clock doesn't stop, and now it does. I don't know what took Pitt so long to call a timeout there. I think Pat Narduzzi was hoping that it was going to be a first down and that the chains would move and they'd stop the clock for that. But they marked it short. You see the clock, 27, 26, and somehow Able to get it to Reed, who just tries to split the defenders, but he's clearly short. 21 seconds. I mean, you let nine seconds potentially come off the clock right there. I, I don't think it was clear to Pat Narduzzi. Yeah. Man, that's just an unfortunate deal, but could have saved seven seconds. That's maybe an extra two plays. So we'll see whether or not that matters here down the stretch. Well, you're out of timeouts. So everything basically, right, has to be sideline or end zone. Yes, and within under 15, it's got to be clock automatic. So not worried about the down, worried about saving the time. Immediate clock situation where you spike it, but you've obviously got to be beyond the sticks if you're tackled in bounds. Well, it's second and a foot. Not even sure about the spot. That was uh, very close to Reed being right on that 25-yard line when he went down. 14 seconds to go. Pittsburgh down by four. Yarnell, it's deflected. Peyton Page got a hand on it. It was intended for Bartholomew, who was open. But then it would have been interesting to see what would have happened. Could he get to the sideline before he got tackled? They would have stopped the clock to move the chains. They would have had to line up to spike it quickly. Parker back in the ball game now for Clemson. And they're going to keep Bartholomew on that right side again to help out Jackson Brown on third down. He's one of their best receivers. He chips and goes out. Yarnell hit as he throws. Incomplete trying to get it to Mumfield. Or to Williams rather. And it comes down to this play. Protection is paramount here. You got to get it to the end zone more than likely, obviously, with under five seconds. So you got to allow your receivers to run 26 yards downfield. That means you're going to need a good three seconds. So make sure you're sound of protection. Make sure your right tackle's not on an island against TJ Parker. And see if you can't find Poppy Williams, your slot receiver, with this zone coverage. That's where I'd be looking. Oh, they flinched again. There's no flag down. The throw down the middle is intercepted by Khalil Barnes, and that should end the game.
The Clemson sideline was in an uproar as the ball was snapped. It looked like Pitt for sure flinched again on the offensive line. There was not a flag down. And had that pass been completed in the end zone, what a sequence of events that would have been.